With Paul Bunyan's axe back in Minnesota, the Gophers can now entertain serious thoughts of adding to their trophy case today's prize, that elusive jug from Michigan, then completing a trophy triple play with the pig name Floyd of Rosedale all in the same year. Their battle cry, take back the trophies, but stealing Michigan's treasure is always the toughest. I would love nothing more than to bring back the jug. It's something that I think would help revitalize the program uh, even further. Meanwhile, the Wolverines have rarely seen so vulnerable. After free falling from the lofty heights of the national rankings all the way to a disappointing five and four, even a bowl bid is now at risk of being fumbled. But Tyrone Wheatley is back. After missing two weeks with a shoulder injury, he hopes to have Michigan alive and kicking all over again. The little brown jug being wheeled out of the Wolverine locker room under lock and key, shackled and belonging to Michigan. They've won the last handful of battles between these two teams, Minnesota and Michigan. That's where we are today. The Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis. Wolverines at five and four, and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota at four and five. Hi, everyone. Kevin Harlan alongside Gary Danielson. You know, about this time every year, it seems as though Michigan is making a stretch run to the Rose Bowl. But, Gary, that's not the case this season. No, it's been a strange year for Michigan football. Early, something that I've really never seen following Michigan football for a long time, players openly talking national championship. But early losses to Notre Dame and Michigan State really sent this football team reeling along with injuries. And instead of talking bowls, Gary Moeller said, hey, you guys better worry about your jobs. He's really opened up this football team. It's been tough in practice. And he said the toughest players will play for Michigan. And that's really what's got him back on course. As for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, a devastating loss in the snow on the plains of Illinois last week in Champaign. You and Brad Nessler were there. A last second touchdown by the I beat Minnesota a devastating loss how does their coach now the Golden Gopher coach Jim Wacker get his team back in sync well they're lucky to have Jim Wacker I mean because it was a devastating loss Minnesota lives with the blitz 23 seconds to go in the game Illinois hits a screen runs it for a touchdown a game Minnesota thought they had they come back but you know when you run the blitz and you live with the blitz you die with the blitz and with Tyrone Wheatley coming back today I could see a big running play hitting for Michigan against them and as always patrolling our sideline is Charlene Hawk Charlene Kevin, it might seem that for the Wolverines who normally talk about Rose Bowls and national championships, the little brown jug wouldn't mean much. Wrong. All week long, this has been on display in the Michigan locker room, and Coach Moeller has delivered a couple of stirring speeches about the importance of hanging on to it. Michigan needs one more win in order to be eligible to continue its 18-year bowl streak. Now, Minnesota may not have a bowl on the line, but for the entire team who've never even laid eyes on the jug, the desire not to just see it but to claim it is every bit as intense. And we'll be right back as Michigan and Minnesota fight for the jug right after we check in with Mike Dorico. Mike? Charlene, if anyone deserves an indoor game, it's you folks in the Big Ten. We'll be watching the battle for the little brown jug. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. By Men in Speed Stick Deodorant and Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the number one for movers and shakers. And by MetLife. Get Met. It pays. Welcome back to the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis with Charlene Hawks and Gary Danielson. Kevin Harlan, I expect the crowd of about 40,000 today to watch Michigan and coach Gary Moeller, who is going probably through his rockiest season since the 1990 campaign in Ann Arbor. He is 5-4 and four overall coming into this afternoon. And on the other side of the field is Jim Wacker. Spent most of his years down in Texas, namely at TCU. He's in his second season, and I think they've turned things around up here in Minneapolis. Well, Kevin, I think the interesting thing about Wacker is, you know, getting the players up is one thing, but somebody had to get the coaches up the last week after that tough loss because that was really devastating for a guy who's trying to turn around a program. The freshman Hamilton has got it teed up for the Michigan Wolverines. The back darkens and Rodney Heath. And we are underway in the dome in downtown Minneapolis. Heath of the two with some blockers ahead. Skips by the 20. Fumble on the play near the 24 and recovered at the 24 yard line. Minnesota will get the ball first. Their quarterback is a 59% passer. That's Scott Eckers and Tony Carter's a good one in the backfield with him. 
Omar Douglas, the number one all-time University of Minnesota receiver, along with Garrison Early and Dalen. And it's uh, Fredenberg on that line. He is a senior playing his last game with Bertine, Rogers, O'Brien, and Chris Folks. It's first and ten for the Gophers. Well, this is something new. All the receivers are in a scramble position behind the quarterback, and then they bust out of it. One back set for the Gophers. Buster Stanley busts up the first play. What tremendous penetration by Stanley. Well, Stanley has played end, nose tackle, and now he's back out at end for this football game. And for the Michigan defense, there's number 60, Buster Stanley. He anchors a good line with Horn, Rakowski, and Gannon Dudler. Shante Peoples moves from the secondary now to the linebacking core with the leading tackler Irons and Matt Dyson. And in that secondary, the freshman and a comer is Clarence Thompson with winners Ty Law and Alfred Birch. The flag has been thrown on the Golden Gophers. Buster Stanley, one of the best in the Big Ten. Say he watches more film than probably anybody else on that Wolverine ball club. He's really been the leader of the football team, and Michigan has made a name for themselves and really has a great tradition of senior leadership, and Buster Stanley has fallen right in line with that senior leadership. Intentional grounding called on Minnesota. It'll be second and 23. Chris Darkins taking it up the middle, the leading rusher for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Jared Irons, leading tackler, makes the stop. I think that's going to be the key to the football game is how well Minnesota can stay ahead of the downs. What I mean by that is these long yardage downs like second and 20 and third and 20, I don't see much hope for them picking them up. They have to be able to use the running game, and in this situation, they're not going to be able to utilize it. It's going to be tough on them. End of the yard of the previous play, it'll be third and 22. Or Scott Eggers, the junior from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Darkens by himself in the backfield. And it appears that Omar Douglas, number 80, is the man who is offsides for Minnesota. So Gary, two quick calls on the Golden Gophers. Interesting to watch the uh, Michigan defense right now. They have a lot of injuries. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. In fact, Gary Moeller told, uh, told us last week that he only took one linebacker to the hotel the night before the game. That's amazing for a college football team. Especially for this program. Oh, really? With all the depth they've got in Michigan. Now third and 27 for Minnesota. And Darkins dancing his way and wrapped up and taken down. Big tackle made by Damon Denson. He is a freshman, 6'4", and this is a very young Michigan team. And Denson kind of epitomizes where they're headed. Well, I think with Damon Denson and Will Carr, they're, they're, they're going to be fixtures around here in the future, and they're following a guy like Buster Stanley and his leadership, and they're learning from him. Minnesota will punt now. It's Mike Kimball, average of about 33 yards, and Alexander D. back for Michigan. Another flag thrown on the play, and this is a horrible punt. Shanks and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. They better hope it's against Michigan. Yes. <laughs> 12 yard punt officially right now. It's Ron Winner, our referee here today. Inside. That's like a turnover. Michigan getting the ball on the 22 yard line to start the game. Jim Illegal Blinder. motion on the offense. Penalties decline. First down. So Michigan given a gift to the 22 yard line and Gary Muller's got his offense out there. Todd Collins is their quarterback who is about as accurate a thrower as this program has ever seen. Tyrone Wheatley ducks the eye along with Shea Foster in the backfield. With the catch in a gain of about eight inside the 15 at the 14 yard line. That pass thrown by Todd Collins, but Tyrone Wheatley comes back after missing a couple weeks with a bad shoulder. Out there with Collins and Shea Foster as blocker. Derek Alexander just caught that pass. Fourth all time Michigan Wolverine receiver with Smith in the tight end Burkholder. And on that line, the lone senior starter is Milio. 
Marlon Marinero, Sullivan, and the rest of a very big and strong and young crew for the Wolverines. Here's second down and two. Wheatley with the call. And he dives close to the first down near the 12-yard line. Craig Sauer makes the stop. Where the Minnesota defense, one of the team's best defensive linemen, is the man who anchors the middle. That's Ed Hawthorne with Crowdville, Cockrell, and Capella. In the linebacking core, Heath is the senior. All calls on the defensive plays with Viet and Sauer. And in the secondary, Rosga is the former quarterback who makes all the calls in the secondary and makes a ton of plays. Here's a first and ten. No score early in the ball game. A nice penetration made coming up from the linebacking core, the sophomore Craig Sauer. Very interesting formation by Michigan that time, Kevin. They had a uh, freshman tackle, Thomas Gwines, at the uh, offensive end at the top of your screen. And you can see him right up here. That's a tackle. So they're going on balance line to the top of the screen. And really, he got beat outside. Second down and 16 for the Wolverines. Alexander and Smith are the wideouts. Collins going to the end zone, looking for Alexander. Incomplete pass. Narcisse did a nice job that time, and that's going to be part of Michigan's game plan is to go deep on the Minnesota defensive backs. They do not have a lot of uh, respect for the speed of the Minnesota defense, but Minnesota's going to keep you off balance by showing bump and run and bailing out and coming in a, a little bit of a zone. Narcisse did a good job that time, and with 10 interceptions in the last two games, that could have been an interception right there. We should point out that this has been Michigan's problem most of the season. They get good field position, but they can't score. Yeah, they've had good offense. They just have not been putting points up there. Four receivers now, third and 16 for the Wolverines. Collins the throw, blitz is on. Bobbles it up, and just over the fingertips of Amani Toomer, the sophomore from Concord, California. And Collins took a wicked hit from Russ Heath, who came up the middle. And that's going to continue to be the game plan on passing situations for Minnesota. They know they have to put pressure on Collins. So coming from the outside, coming from the inside, they're going to blitz. And look at Tuner's wide, Tumor's wide open, but Collins did not have the time to take dead aim on him. Well, this has been a adventure, it seems. Every time Michigan has tried field goals or extra point, Elizabeth with a 35-yarder. Reversma, the hole. Michigan trying to take the first lead, and they do. 35-yard field goal by Elizabeth. And the Michigan Wolverines, whose bowl hopes are still alive, striking early in Minnesota. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Saab Cars USA, who proudly presents the all-new Saab 900 beginning November 15th. And by 1-800-COLLECT, America's inexpensive way to call someone collect. Michigan just got a 35-yard field goal from Peter Lezovic, and they're on top 3 nothing. They're on top 3 nothing, Kevin, but I think that's a big stand for Minnesota early in this football game. Their offense really turned the ball over at the 22-yard line. Michigan ends up getting one first down, but only three points. I think Mark Dove, defensive coordinator, and Jim Wacker have to be very pleased with only giving up three points. Second kickoff now by Elizabeth. Darkens along with Rodney Heath to back for the Gophers. And Heath again at the 10 this time. Good field position out to the 21. We send it back to our college football studio and Mike Tirico. Mike? Kevin, two for one. We start in Blacksburg. Syracuse against Virginia Tech. Maurice DeShazo to his tight end, John Burke. Tech led 13-0, blocked a punt, goes in again. They lead 21-0 on the orange. Speaking of the orange, to Death Valley, let's check out Clemson. Dexter McLean, a cornerback normally. He's the quarterback today. Runs his first career carry for a touchdown, and the Tigers lead. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Not a good sign for Virginia looking for their first win ever in Death Valley against the Clemson Ball Club. And not a good sign for Minnesota. Again, another penalty on the kickoff, and they're backed up again on their own 11-yard line. They need to get the ball in a position where they can open up their game plan. Gary, that's a third Minnesota penalty to begin the game. 
They're lucky to only be down three to nothing. Yeah. Scott Akers takes his team out. And it's the first and ten for the Golden Gophers. No backs now for Rutgers. And a pass down the middle. Omar Douglas, did he trap it or did he lasso the pass? At the 30, it'd be good for a first down and a pickup of 20. They'll call it a completion. And that can kind of get things going for that offense. Two things to notice for Minnesota. First of all, they take very tight splits. They're going to try to force the rush very wide. And Eckers has room to step up to this throw. You can see it right over Gannon Dudler, the linebacker. And Douglas, boy, I don't know. It looked like he bobbled a little bit. I could not tell if he got his elbows and hands underneath that catch. Now some breathing room for one more look. Yeah, you got to call it a catch. Out to the 31, first and 10. Here comes Darkins, Buster Stanley. Yeah, he can't grab onto him. Darkins throws his way. The five out of the 35-yard line. Alfie Birch coming up in the secondary to make the Michigan stop. Darkins is an impressive back. You know, Minnesota's considered a passing attack. And last week, they rushed for 142 yards against a very sound Illinois rush defense. And Darkins gained 90 himself. He's a really impressive football player. And Gary Moeller is very impressed with him. Former soccer player from Houston. Didn't play organized ball until he was a high school player. Yeah, he's still learning how to play football. Terminology, they said, was still yeah. new to him. Here's a second and six for the Gophers, trailing 3-0. Edgar, short drop back. And a quick throw to the far side. They do not have the first down. Reception made by Rashawn Early is a freshman from Bel Air, Texas. He makes the grab out on the wing. 21st reception of the year. Kevin, really, the Minnesota offense is going to play into the Michigan defense hands a little bit today, only for the reason is they do not have a lot of healthy linebackers. Michigan will use six defensive backs, seven defensive backs on the football field at one time, and they're going to try to match up personnel versus the Minnesota offense. Third and two. They had too many people on the field. That's a first down run. Michigan is very run. fortunate that time. That's what they're booing about here in the dome is today. They had about 13 people out there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they had too many players on the field. They, their, their secondary did not get off the field. Really no harm, no foul, I guess. They picked up the first down. The confusion is because Michigan is trying to match up personnel. You're seeing people coming on late, and some of those defensive backs for Michigan did not get off the field before the ball was snapped. Well, we're used to their offense doing that, but not yeah, their defense, right? right? <laughs> That's Lloyd Carr, defensive coordinator, who has to match up all day. It's going to be a tough job for him. Eckers back to throw on first down, looking off his primary receiver, but he meets Buster Stanley going up the middle. No gain, Stanley making his second solo tackle. Very quick for a guy that size, isn't it? And, and an inspirational leader for this football team and really the kind of senior leadership that Gary Moeller is looking from. He's played inside, but in this football game, he's going to move outside and go against Folks and Vertan and try to put some pressure from the outside. I really think Eckers, though, has to be more calm in the pocket. He kind of bailed out a little too quick that time. And remember, He's got Timmy Shade looking over his shoulder, and I would not be surprised if we don't see Shade early in this game. Stanley leads Michigan in six. Little play action by Eckers, moving up nicely in the pocket. Finds a receiver, has a Minnesota first down to the Michigan 41, gain of 14. Omar Douglas, his second first down reception. And that's really where I think against the zone defense, Minnesota should try to attack. Against Gerald Irons and the linebacking core, watch Michigan will drop into a zone this time, and Omar Douglas is open for about five seconds right in the heart of that zone and gets an easy pitch and catch for a first down. Douglas with some good speed. Runs on the relay team here at the University of Minnesota, the 4 by 100 meter team. They won a couple of uh, races a year ago, finished high in the Big Ten indoor and outdoor field championships last season. Omar Douglas. Here's a first and ten. Good time for Eckers. Hit as he threw, pass broken up 35 yard line. Great coverage applied. Jaron Irons was in the vicinity. 
Jared Irons came over by just watching the quarterback's eyes, but Gannon Dudler, number 55, who's played defensive tackle, inside linebacker, and defensive end, today was matched up on that play against the tight end and had to cover him all over the field. That's a matchup that I think Minnesota will look at and try to take advantage of. You talked about the speed there. Dudler began his career at Michigan as a defensive lineman. He's really a valuable football player because he can play so many different positions for a team that's got a lot of injuries. Eighth play of the Minnesota Drive. Beckers to throw. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. I think Jared Irons got his hand on that one. Rushing inside, occupying alignment, and then jumping up and making the play. Before the season began, Irons was projected no better than a third, fourth string linebacker. Here he is, the leading tackler. That number 37 would be probably familiar to a lot of Michigan alums and fans. That was the number worn by Eric Anderson, the Butkus Award winner. And he broke his record with a number of yes. catches. No respect around here anymore, is there? Freshman record for tackles for Jared Irons. From Conroe, Texas. Brother plays in Nebraska. Third and ten now for Minnesota. the throw. Rush comes out. Stanley's got him. Dumps it across the middle. Incomplete looking for the tight end. And that was Eric Dalen. And Buster Stanley once again gives him his calling Jim, call. Jim and I have to laugh because Buster Stanley's playing at a different pace than the other 21 guys on the football field. If there was a problem that Bertan had last week against Illinois was the bull rush. Well, I'll tell you, this was a bull rush personified by Buster Stanley. He ran him over getting back to the quarterback that time. I don't think that guy's going to let this Michigan defense or team lose today. Ron Oldie is about 35 yards per punt, taking the place of the first punter, Kimball, who punted just 12 yards. And here comes the rush, and it's blocked. Michigan's got the ball, running it down. With the retrieval was Steve King. Yeah, guess who? Walter Smith, the best special teams player that I've ever seen at Michigan, makes the play. He's a wide receiver, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of people connected with the Michigan program that say Walter Smith has a defensive bat mentality. And Jerry Hanlon, the uh, old coach for Michigan, who's now the play-by-play -play guy, told me that Walter Smith, who's right here, comes to the outside, is the best special teams player he's ever seen at Michigan, and likens him to a Steve Tasker for Buffalo. Right. He comes in and makes the play on the first one. And then Steve King gobbles it up. That's the second punter that Minnesota has used today, and both have had a tough time. By the way, that is yeah. the first punt blocked by Minnesota this yeah, season. Yeah, one guy took too long, Ron Holty, number 31, and the first guy shanked it. You got problems with your punt game for Minnesota. Inside, down to the 12-yard line. Tackle made by Russ Heath. Michigan's on top, 3-0. About halfway through this first quarter, Tyrone Wheatley. You know, we saw Marshall Falk a couple nights ago out in San Diego. How uh, how do these two well, compare? I can tell you there's a lot of NFL teams would love to have both of those guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think Wheatley's a little faster than Falk, and Falk has made a, a great career, and he really did come on big Thursday night. But I think Wheatley impresses a lot of people with the way he can catch and run the ball and get outside and change the scoreboard. Second down and six for the Wolverines. Good time for Collins. Going for the end zone. And looking for Amani Tumor. They ran that same play last time. Nice coverage that time by Juan Hunter. He knew he had help inside with the free safety. He just stayed outside Amani Tumor's post corner route. But Ty Wheatley can do more than just run the football. In this football game, when you're playing tailback, you have to block people because Minnesota is going to rush and come from the outside. You see Wheatley take the outside leg exactly like you're supposed to. And Tumor trying to run the post corner gets taken at the pass by Juan Hunter. Third down and six. Wheatley the long back. And the draw play. Here comes Tyron Wheatley with a 10. Got a block at the 5. He'll put in touchdown, Michigan.
Big block at the five on the 13 yard touchdown run. That's the speed. You run an easy draw play. And again, Minnesota didn't blitz that time, but their secondary people were turning around and looking for men to cover. They don't even see Wheatley as he breaks into the secondary. And that's how you get big plays with the running game. You pop the line of scrimmage, and Wheatley's speed is impressive compared to the Minnesota defenders. Elizavik will try the extra point. Nice run by Tyrone Wheatley. Out of Inkster, Michigan. Elizabeth. Lamers with the backup quarterback with the hold. And Michigan is on top 10 to nothing. As Wheatley climbs in for his ninth touchdown of the season. And from 13 yards away, Michigan on top 10 to nothing. Back to back plays for Ty Wheatley, Kevin. First of all, a little question mark about his shoulder. Well, I think on the blocking play to the previous play, you can see that his shoulder is fine as he takes the outside leg of the blitzer coming in with his left shoulder. Then you get the draw, you know, and the shoulder on the draw play doesn't hurt as bad as he gets a nice block about the five yard line by the wide receivers, sprints to the end zone, and he really has too much speed. Minnesota does not match up well with Ty Wheatley when he has the ball. That was a money too. Let's go down to uh, the play, and here comes the kickoff by Elizabeth. Picked up by Rodney Heath. He's got some blockers. And he's out past the 30 near the 33 yard line. And downstairs to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Kevin, Tyrone Wheatley was so anxious to get back into practice this week, partly because he saw some of these younger running backs effectively taking over his spot, but he was so anxious to get back into practice that he went looking for hits to see how his shoulder was doing. Coaches had to pull him off so he wouldn't injure himself further. Now, he was injured while making a tackle on the punt team, and Coach Muller took a lot of heat for having him on the punt team. Tyrone insists that's not a dangerous place for him to be. He just made a funny tackle. Even so, he is off the punt team. And as you saw, Ty Wheatley slapping Walter Smith who made it possible with that block punt. Back to pass Eckers. Taken down on the play by Steve Rakowski. Second sack today by the Michigan defense. just not pushing anybody back. Well, they need to be able to open up that running game, and this is the key drive already. It's third down and long again, and uh, I don't think Eckers is going to see much more of this football game. Not that it's all his fault, but when you have Shade, who was hot last week, I think you're going to see him in the football game. They can't afford to wait too long. Eckers, three of seven through the air. He'll throw for an eighth time. That's hanging up there. And incomplete looking for wide receiver Omar Douglas. Yeah, he threw the dreaded duck that time, <laughs> slipped out of his hand. Well, they say Shade has the stronger arm. He played a lot last week at Illinois, and he may be seeing some time. The reason why I didn't start today is this is an interchangeable quarterback situation, is because that guy got to practice all week, Eckers, and Shade missed uh, a couple days of practice. Ron holding a punt for a third time for Minnesota. He had the first punt blocked as. He was taking the place of the initial punter. That was Kimball. Derek Alexander, he back this time. And on the hop, he takes it out of bounds near the 28-yard line. 45-yard punt. First quarter clock at 5-12. Michigan 10-0 over Minnesota. New car buyers, used car buyers, Heiser for... Back in the Metrodome, downtown Minneapolis. Wolverines have a running touchdown from Wheatley, who's back after a two-week injury. And Michigan playing well. We were going to ask Gary if they're going to play with some emotion. It appears early that the Wolverines are playing and, with some emotion. And I think they're following their captain, uh, Buster Stanley, the guy that's made the difference, and Walter Smith from the outside. Walter Smith's an impressive football player. Tyrone 
Wheatley. Right into the teeth of the Minnesota defense. And the tackle made by Ed Hawthorne. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Kevin, South Carolina gave Florida fits last year. Maybe fitting to do so today. Brandon Bennett, a 26-yard run for the touchdown. Caps off an eight-play, 80-yard drive. Gamecocks by seven. First time Florida has uh, visited South Carolina since 1939. There's a second and seven for Michigan. Wheatley again, blocked by Shea Foster. And he tumbles out near the 38-yard line. Andrew Viet, a senior from Palm Harbor, Florida. Boy, that sounds cozy this time of year, doesn't he? He makes the stop. Well, in here it's cozy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> He did get the first down. Michigan uh, offensive line, a big change at left tackle over there who was blocking Viet on that play. Thomas Gwynn is starting for Trezell Jenkins, number 75, a freshman, 6'5, 299. So they go freshman, freshman on the left side between him and Runyon. On that line, four freshmen, five sophomores, one junior, and a senior. Building for the future at the University of Michigan. Nice play action by Collins, looking long. He's got Alexander. A catch and he's chased inside the 10-yard line of Minnesota. Tackle made by Juan Hunter. And Sean Collins, one of the most accurate passers this program has ever known, makes the tremendous throw, and it's a first and goal to go. Juan Hunter was a little bit upset with his free safety that time, Rosga. He knew he had help inside, and on the play action pass, as you can see him, he's still talking. He grabbed Derek Alexander on the play, and Alexander still ripped away from it to make the play. One of the great things that Todd Collins does is throw the ball deep. Penalties decline. Roska bites top of your screen, takes one step up. That's it. As you see him turn, that's how you get beat if you're a free safety, just that one step. And as you see Howard come up and make the tackle, he's going, where were you, buddy? A lot of man-to-man -man by that secondary. Huh? That time it was man, but he did have help in the middle of the field, and he expected it. And Roska just took that one false step, and it cost him. First and goal, ball to second. Race to the sideline. From behind, Juan Hunter brings him down and takes off his helmet. Wow, there's a flag thrown on the play as well. Yeah, and that could be very dangerous right there. Juan Hunter grabbed him apparently with the by the face mask and ripped him down. And obviously, he's trying to grab anything he can to stop him. And he gets him around the head right here, as you should see it on the right side of your screen. He grabs a face mask and then rips him right off. That could have been a serious injury to a very talented football player. One more look at it, and that's a good thing the helmet came off there. Yes. That's those breakaway First chin straps. 15-yard face mask. Penalized half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Of course, with Wheatley's bad shoulder, neck being jarred like that, that whole thing's affected. And he's very fortunate that helmet came off that timer. That could have been a very serious injury. You know, and, uh, and it's nothing personal against Juan Hunter. I mean, that's a situation where you know Wheatley's got the corner on you, and you're just reaching out trying to grab whatever you can. I doubt that he even saw, saw what happened, but that is a dangerous football play, and this situation is only a one-yard penalty also. Ed Davis and Shea Foster in the game. Davis is a sophomore from Detroit. And yet another high school American for Gary Moore. He'll get the pitch. Cut inside near the line of scrimmage. Ross Heath came in. Blitzing. You know, this team defensively for the Gophers blitzes all the time. They do, but in this situation they had to. I think Dennis Capello that time, outside defensive end, made the play to turn him in to Heath to make the tackle. Situation here that Michigan likes to fake the ball inside and then run either the fade or the slant, depending on the technique of the defensive back. As uh, Ed Hawthorne, their best defensive tackle, goes out limping on the play. Michigan's in with three tight ends on this situation. Wants to be on. Tyron Wheatley back in the game. He'll get the call. Up the middle. Touchdown, Michigan. Wheatley for the second time today. Wow. That 
that's the old time football Kevin that you're used to seeing for Michigan three tight ends little counter tray action and I think Mike Sullivan number 61 sophomore tackle really opened that hole to the right side of the field you're going to see the big number 75 wins come around and fill in there but look at the hole he gets to run through when you're running from the four yard line and you run through a hole that you could drive a truck through that's great blocking by the offensive line and again taking advantage Gary of some of the opportunities they have this offense has not done that most of the season no they they ran right at head to Hawthorne's replacement that time also snap was put down but put back up by Reimers and the kick is good by Elizabeth and a second touchdown run by Tyrone Wheatley this in the last two games with the bad shoulder Michigan on top of the goal for 17 to nothing One more look, you see Russ Heath take one step the wrong way, and then Burkholder, the tight end, and the backside tackle come around and fit on him and get it in there. We saw a long pass where Rosca took one step and went the wrong way. Russ Heath with the counter tray action. Remember, he knows he's not as fast as that man right there, Ty Wheatley, so he has to take that step. And with the big hole, he didn't have a chance. As you see some other scores from Division one double A. Well, the Gophers were trying to figure out exactly how they would come out and respond to last week when they lost at Illinois and obviously a little bit flat to begin today. Well, flat and they're making a lot of mistakes and Michigan is up their tempo of their football team. I think that that tongue lashing and get tough policy that Gary Moeller had two weeks ago prior to the uh, Michigan the Purdue game has really caught his football team. And I remember back to 1990 when uh, Michigan ended up in the Gator Bowl, the 91 Gator Bowl. They lost a couple of close games, and they went back and rebuilt the team. And I think that the future's in front of this team, especially as young as they are on the offensive line. It'll be Darkens taking it by the 10. And he is smothered on the far side. Smothering college football is always our Mike Tirico. Mike? Speaking of smothered, Shane Edge's foot. The Florida kicker down 7-0, blocked by Frank Adams of South Carolina. Four plays later, the Gamecocks move it towards the goal line. Steve Tannehill hadn't thrown a touchdown in 13 quarters. Toby Cates takes care of that, and look out. Gamecocks by 14. Mike, South Carolina came in 4-5, and five and Florida, Gary, 7-1. and one. Well, Florida likes to win them with about three seconds to go in the game. <laughs> You're right. As Shade is in at quarterback now. Well, this Minnesota offense will run more no back than any other offense in college football. And Shade, as Gary said, in the game for the Garrison makes the stop. Oh, they still have Eckers in the ball game. Oh, I'm sorry. Eckers is still in there. And Shade was warming up on the sideline. In at 10 yards on the play and very close to a Minnesota first down. Seems like the Minnesota offense uses a lot of decoys, trying to fool all the time. Well, what they, what, and they really believe that that's the way they have to match up against the team. They don't feel they can match up one on one, and they have to keep the defenses off balance. That is their game plan. And look at that. It's the key to the game so far. Two messed up punts, one blocked and one shanked. First and ten. Over should get the first down. Eckers in the draw play. John Angus Charles and that will get the Michigan football team fired up because if there was one complaint that Gary Moore had about this team is they were not being physical enough on defense watch Agnes come Janet John Agnes Charles come number 34 on the left side of your screen he's got him darkens and darkens has got it in reverse awful quick that'll get it fired up on the sideline Lloyd Carr grabs him and says that's what we're looking for and a Minnesota player's down. That is Darkens, number 44, the leading rusher for the Golden Gophers. And that was a completely legal hit by Charles. Boy, he tattooed him on that one. Darkens, as we said before, played the two years of high school football, still learning the terminology. Buttons on the track team. Hales from Houston, Texas. Grew up in a part of town and went to his school. They had some violence he had to deal with as a young, as a young man. In fact, his best friend was shot in a chest just a few feet from Darkens, as a matter of fact. Listen to this hit. Oh. 
I got a new term for him, bell rung. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> Darkins is going to have to try to find the other sideline. You see Charles come over and kind of give him five from the right side, slap him, said, hey, guy, just doing my job. Michigan has come out today with fire in their eye. They play Ohio State next week, and as we mentioned before, they are still in the bowl picture. Minnesota down 17 to nothing. Second down and six. Chuck Rios out of the backfield. Hard to make a move on Ty Law, but he stuck with him pretty good. And he's out to the 33-yard line and a pickup of three. They kind of they caught Michigan in a zone that time. Ty Law left his receiver because he's just looking at the quarterback and he's standing right there. I think Minnesota was expecting man coverage, and that was a really a long handoff, like a sweep in this offense to Rio to Rios. Another linebacker put in. Shante Peoples will leave for the Michigan defense in the third and two for a very interesting Minnesota offense. Third and two and no backs. How is football changed? Eckers. He's got a receiver. Catch made by Lewis Garrison. Junior from nearby Burnsville, Minnesota. Gain is seven on the play and a first down for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I think Minnesota feels confident that they can throw the ball against this Michigan football team. They just can't afford the big sacks and the big mistakes early in the downs. If they, they just throw incomplete passes, they're better off uh, early down because I know they feel confident throwing the ball against the secondary. Minnesota has yet to cross midfield today. Using the near sideline and like a battering ram, he picks up about two. Tackle made by Dion Johnson, a junior from Detroit, number 28 for the Michigan secondary. Boy, they lost some good kids last year to graduation. Oh, four people from their offensive line plus their tight end, Tony McGee, that uh, was really the you know the backbone of this football team. And that's why spirits got so high for this Michigan football team in predictions. They all saw Wheatley run against Washington and said, hey, he's back. We're going to be great. You forgot the guys up front. We're back. Second mate. Eckers is brought down. Loss of three and the third sec. And let's go back to Mike Tirico. Mike. Virginia has never won at Clemson. 0 16 and 1, looking to change that today. Simeon Willis with some time up top 58 yards later. Demetrius Allen, their first hookup of the year. And the Cavs tied the game at seven. Clemson trying to come back from last week's loss at North Carolina, 24 0. With the tie game down in the southeast at seven. See, there's the problem that Eckers had. He's taking that sack on that last down. Now it's third and 15 instead of third and 10. Very tough to pick up. Here they come again. Bumps it off in the flat. Punt by Antonio Carter. And where he should have lost about five, he is again to the 45-yard line. The tackle is made by Tony Henderson. See, that would have been a first down had he just thrown the ball away on the down before because that was a 10-yard gain, and now they end up having to punt the ball. Orders come to a close. Two rushing touchdowns by Michigan's Tyrone Wheatley in a 35-yard field goal. And a red-hot Michigan Wolverine team has come out. I and Ohio State next week, shutting out the Golden Gophers at the end of one. 17 to nothing. Charlene Hawks on the sideline, and upstairs, Gary Danielson, Kevin Harlan with our ESPN crew from Minneapolis inside the Metrodome. Outside, by the way, about 30 degrees, fog, rain, wind. It's great to be indoors. Holding a kick for Minnesota with no rush. Eric Alexander will call for and be a lot of a fair catch back at about the 18 yard line 38 yard punt by holding the early edition of the residents in college football scoreboard show comes up at 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight then CFA primetime number 20 Louisville against number 10 Texas A&M you know last year Texas A&M beat Louisville 48 team Quarterback Jeff Brown of the Cardinals meets A&M linebacker and Lombardi candidate Sam Adams 730 Eastern time live College Station tonight with Ron Franklin and Mike Gottfried. ESPN primetime college football. Here's 17-0 Michigan. Wolverines have the ball again. Todd Collins. Walter 
Smith. And a tackle after a gain of about three, and Juan Hunter is there for the secondary for the Golden Gophers. I think this is imperative that uh, the Minnesota defense gets a stop here. As you can see, first three possessions, a couple of them look the starting position, 22-yard line and 17-yard line, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. They need a stop if they hope to stay in this football game. Weicker trying to devise some kind of potion for that defense to stop a real tough Michigan offense. Second down and seven. Wheatley got a block. Crashing over the left side. He's out to about the 38 yard line and picks up another handful of guards. Konzemius, Justin Konzemius, a sophomore from Fargo, North Dakota, number 20. You always like to have those running backs take on the secondary guys and fall forward when they come up to tackle you. And that's what you like about Ty Wheatley. Not only can he take the home run ball and take it all the way, but he's got the power to push through the little defensive backs and fall forward for the extra two yards, where now it's third and one instead of third and four. Find the blitz again. Over the right side this time. No doing for a first down run. Tyrone Wheatley a little bit short. He had to get outside the 29 and barely got to the 29 on that run. So maybe Minnesota can make some kind of defensive statement here after they've been scored. Yeah, on the first three it times. was an important stop for the Minnesota defense just to stay in this football game, keep the crowd, and frankly, probably keep the audience too. <laughs> <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> Ron Winter is our referee here today with this Big Ten crew. And they're going to be shy by about six inches or so. You might see Michigan just go for it. A lot of the confidence they have in this football team. What would you do? Well, I think I'd punt the football. <laughs> Let's see what Gary Muller is going to do. Situation. Oh. Uh, they also have the no play, but I. I Looks like they're just going to tie it on and figure they can make the six inches. They got a couple of tight ends in there now, Burke Holder and David Jones. A freshman fullback in John Ritchie with Wheatley dotting the eye. Audibleizing now Collins, play clock at 15, plenty of time. Ritchie, the fullback, running into his own lineman. I don't think he got it, Gary. I don't think he captured it. Let's see that as uh, John Madden said, as it depends if the uh, referee or the linesman is right footed or left footed on this <laughs> one. Well, Jim Wacker knows this would be a nice stop for his defense, and they'll bring the chain. Oh, they're going to give him the first down. If you looked at the sideline, you could see that the flag was just outside the 29 yard line. Yeah, you, can, progress you can see right here, here's the flag and there's the line, but I, it looked very close. He had one extra push, Richie did right there. It looks like he stopped and then he right falls right forward. Now. That's where I think he crossed the plane. So Michigan wins the gamble on fourth and inches. They got it first and ten. Play action by Collins and a good fit. Going long. Looking for Hayes. He's got Hayes inside the 25 yard line. Another long bomb completed to a Michigan wide receiver. They have a flag down in the field, but Collins is amazing the way he can throw the deep ball. Hayes streaking down the middle of the field. They got another play action, and part of the game plan going into this game, Cam Cameron told us, was to throw deep against the Minnesota defenders. Penalty called, I think, on Michigan. First of the day. It was. I think the penalty was an illegal formation. Not enough people at the line of scrimmage. Hayes was lined up off. For an illegal formation on the offense. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat first down. We're talking about the throw. To me, what was most impressive was the play fake. Well, the play fake was good, but you can see right here, Hayes is off the line of scrimmage. You're giving him one, two, three, four, five people in the backfield. And that's what was the penalty on the play. But as the play fake, the fullback and uh, Ty Wheatley hitting up in there, but Mercury Hayes gets time to cut it, hit a couple moves, but the accuracy of Collins deep is really amazing. Hayes still in there, first and 15 with the Michigan penalty. Tyrone Wheatley 
He'll be eaten alive, trying to go up the middle, and Kevin Holmes is there. A draw play against a blitzing, attacking team is feast or famine. If you break the line of scrimmage, you're going to get a big play out of it. If not, you get a lot of losses on those type of plays. Enzo, look at it. Watch the Minnesota linemen. They're heading upfield, thinking pass rush. Capella sees the handoff, runs it down from behind. Also, Cockwell gets a, a play on it. Good defense. Prattleville makes a nice play on it. Good defense by the Minnesota defense. Okay, second down, 15. side Alexander and he's got a gain of about six to the far side here's a late flag thrown on the near sideline here with Hunter guarding Amani Tumor that was a gain on the play of 11 I say five event 11 yards with the five yard penalty with second 15 on the pass from where that flag was thrown on the Minnesota bench you wonder if uh, one of the Minnesota players didn't point out something that Tumor did it is against Michigan because you got about uh, 45 officials right in that uh, ref's ear and he pointed out that a tumor hit back on Howard. Well, Jim Wacker knows how important this stop is for his football team. You're going to see tumor right side of your screen. Howard comes up and watch tumor. Gives him a little headbutt. Now everybody's going to be saying, hey, did you see that? Did you see that? Yeah, Dead here ball. comes the flag. First of all, Offense penalized 15 yards from the dead ball spot. Third down. As a former pro quarterback, would you admonish your receivers and running backs for making dumb penalties like that? I don't know. I, I was trying to find the snap count, you know, all the time <laughs> when I was in there. <laughs> you come back and say, Mr. Tumor, uh, what did you do out there, sir? Donnie said, Well, they told me to block downfield. I just was using my helmet. This uh, no huddle. And they call it a muddle huddle. Yeah. They just kind of muddle around out there. With the penalty, 30 19 for Michigan. Rockwood, Wheatley. Telling you what, Ed Hawthorne made a great play. The second year starter was on his back and grabbed his ankle and he yanked him down. Ed Hawthorne, number 90, lived out a little earlier, and Mark Dove said that he's going to be one of the best defensive tackles Minnesota's ever fielded here at this university. Just the junior, doesn't have great stats, but he's as good technique-wise as he's ever had. As you can see, he's still limping in this football game. He's got to go if they're going to win this football game. Chris Stapleton is going to punt for Michigan, number 18. Out of bounds inside the 25 at the 23 yard line. The Michigan Wolverines lead this game early in the second quarter, 17 to nothing. Presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Beautiful University Mall on the campus of the University of Minnesota on the banks of the Mississippi River. One of the most picturesque campuses you'll find in the entire Big Ten. It'll be first and ten for the University of Minnesota. At their own 23 scoreless so far. And Eckers with a long pass. Oh, broken up beautifully in the secondary. By Ty Law. Let's go back to Mike Tirico. Kev, here's a long pass that works. Danny Werfel is playing quarterback for Florida today. Going up top to Jack Jackson, 59 yards, a touchdown, a turnover, then a touchdown pass to Harrison Houston, and a missed two-point conversion. That's why it's a five-point lead. Also in the SEC, 96-yard drive by the Dogs to Ty Auburn between the hedges. Thank you, Mike. Here's 17-0 Michigan. It'll be second and ten. Flag thrown. Rashad Early's got the pass. Weaves by traffic. Picks up a Minnesota first down out to the 39-yard line. But as I said, a flag thrown on the play. Tackle made by Michigan secondary performer Alfie Birch. Finally get a good play, and you got holding on the play. Tough to get this offense going for the Minnesota Gophers today. 
Well, we kept asking how they would respond to last week, and Wanker had a huge chore ahead of them to get this team emotionally set after the devastating well, loss. It really was for them. You know, for 59 minutes, they look like they're going to win the football game and all of a sudden lose it. Offense. After this is to the goal from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. That's a tough penalty, too, because it is from the spot of the foul, foul. So instead of it being a 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, they're going to end up with second and almost 22, 23 yards. Well, look at this. It's going to be about 25 yards, it looks like. It's a 16 yard penalty with the reception. So now it'll be second down and 26 for the Gophers with very few options this deep down in their own zone. Darkens in motion. Anchors in his own end zone. Bobbly caught by Darkens. Oh, did he get drilled? My goodness, he was whipped on the play, and Jared Iron said, how do you do? Man, and he whipped him. That time, Michigan's just setting back in the zone. When you have second and 26 yards, you can afford to make everything happen in front of you. In fact, Jason Horn, a defensive tackle number 94, was also dropping. As you see Jason Horn, defensive tackle, he says, I get to drop and pass coverage? This is fun. <laughs> this is like uh, playing football in the backyard. You know, when you don't have any backs in the backfield, there's not much else you can do but run. I mean, throw. Third and 19 for Minnesota. Play action by Edmonds. Down the near side, he's got Omar Douglas. And a fumble after the catch. It's a live ball, and it's picked up by Michigan. Clarence Thompson, the freshman. A great block from his teammate in the backfield. And Thompson, look at him. Michigan has pulled off one big play after another. Clarence Thompson, the man to gobble up that ball and give Michigan first and 10 at the Minnesota 42. Well, this was a nice throw by Eckers right to Douglas, and he does catch this football. Gets hit on the play. Chuck Winters is the guy that makes the play a freshman, and another freshman comes over, a true freshman. Clarence Thompson gobbles it up, and Clarence Thompson looking to score on this type of a play. <laughs> reverses his field and just tripped up. Or he might have been able to reverse it for a touchdown. Michigan first to 10. Tyrone Wheatley. Well, he wouldn't give up and picks up a nice chunk of yards right over the left guard down to about the 36 37 yard line of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Wheatley has two touchdowns today. He is tied now for second among all time Michigan scores with Desmond Howard 37 touchdowns. Anthony Carter has 40 at number one. Second five. Again, we move. Shea Foster with the escort. Big hole. He's got a first down. Another block by the wide receiver, Alexander. And he's down to the 23 yard line. They call it speed. Ty Wheatley, close to 225 pounds. But Jeff Rosga, the free safety, thought he had a beat on him coming up to make the tackle, but he just outran him. Cuts inside, cuts back outside. He's playing at a different speed. But look at the blocking up front. That's what makes it go. Coming from the inside out, offensive tackle Joe Mariano, Marinero, and Wheatley turns it up. Derek Alexander in the secondary blocking. That's what makes big plays happen. Shea Foster. High school running back of the year from the state of Oklahoma a couple of years ago. He's a sophomore at 6'2", 240 pounds. Big athlete. He can run the ball. And he bulldozes up the middle. Problem is, in Michigan, there's so many great running backs and fullbacks, it's hard for even a guy who's the best player in the state of Oklahoma to get time to play. It, it, it has to be a little bit frustrating to people like that. But he, but he has to take his pick his spots, do the job on blocking, and be ready to run the ball when he gets cold. called on. Tyrone Wheatley has had a definite effect on this ball game. I'll tell you that. Second down and nine. Nobody in center field. Here comes the blitz. This is when Collins has to take advantage of it. He's looking for Walter Smith in the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. No doubt that was an audible. 
Cam Cameron said there's three or four times in a game when you can read a coverage that you can take advantage of and you have to make it hit. hit. Todd Collins audible. He knew he had man-to-man -man coverage for Walter Smith. Great job. Rosga matched up against him, and he just took him to the sideline. What is he looking at? What does he see when he's Nobody in the center field. He knows he's got man coverage. Jay Foster, remember we said he had the block. At right. times he picks up the middle linebacker. Collins has time to step into it, and Walter Smith beats his man cleanly to the corner. The free safety, Rosga was the guy matched up to him. Well, Minnesota's been living and dying by the blitz. They just died right there. Yeah, it's, a, it's a slow death or a fast death today. Michigan rolling over the Gophers. In every way, special teams have blocked the punt. Defense have had a couple sacks. Touchdown pass, two touchdown runs. Here was the touchdown pass by Collins. Thing to notice here, no one in center field. Here's Raska. He has to play inside technique. Smith comes in, forces it, goes to the corner. Raska's by himself. When you don't get to the blitz man and you're back there as a free safety, perfect throw right to the pylon, you don't have much chance as a defensive back. That's an easy touchdown for Michigan. And Michigan is not waiting for things to happen, man. They are yeah, no, well, no, really, any play they run right now, when they give the ball to Wheatley, it's a potential touchdown. And against man coverage, every throw is a potential touchdown. Hamilton to kick off once again for the Wolverines. It'll be back Darkins and Rodney Heath. And this will be Darkins inside the five. Right up the middle by the 20 and out to about the 21 yard Guess who line. makes the tackle? <laughs> Walter Smith, number two. You block a punt, you catch a touchdown pass, and then you run down on kickoff to make the play. He's all over the place, isn't he? Just caught the touchdown pass as Gary said. I, I predict he'll be the captain of this football team next year. He might be holding a wrist there as he runs off. Wake Forest on top of Georgia Tech. North Carolina State with the lead of the Terrapins. Interesting game. Tech on top of Syracuse. Minnesota first and ten. Darkness. Man, I'll tell you what. Avalanche put on, led by Tony Henderson. Yeah, led by Tony Henderson with the tackle, but Buster Stanley just threw his offensive tackle back into the backfield that time. This guy, I tell you, he's not looking at the dome and the people. Right side of your screen, watch him cave the offensive tackle right back into the ball carrier, and then with Henderson and Stanley making the play. Buster Stanley is a man possessed in this football game. Got the name Buster from his grandmother. To bust things, break things in her household. I said, You take him back to his family's home. Buster stuck with number six, second down and 15. Sacked again. Fourth sack by the Michigan defense coming through William Carr. He's out of Dallas. And William Carr, another freshman football player. You know, if you don't get Michigan this year for the Big Ten Championship, you might have a tough time beating them in the next three years. They've got a lot of young players. Again, this, you kind of got to give it as a coverage sack. He had time to throw this football. That much time, you have to expect the quarterback to be able to throw the ball. But the car keeps working, ends up with the sack. And they're getting in that quarterback's face, too, yeah. right in his vision. It's total domination right now by the Michigan football team, and uh, Jim Wacker has to know what's happening to him. Antonio Carter. And he's like a pinball. Bounce it off defenders. Takes it out near the 18 yard line. Tackle made by Matt Dyson. Injured most of the season. Had some shoulder surgery. And once again, it's time to punt. You know, there, there's really, for the Minnesota fans, there's no use to boo. I mean, the Minnesota football players are playing as tough as they can right now. They're just overmatched. Michigan has more speed and power up front for them. Third time, three and out as Alexander awaits the Holty punt for Minnesota. Good one, good hang time. Alexander in his own 43. Got a great block from Walter Smith. That'll tear him free for the 50, to the 40. And he's inside the 37-yard line of Minnesota. Walter Smith just leveled someone right when the catch was made by Alexander. A 21-yard punt return. Head coach's nephew, Tim Shane. And he's been on the bench. He'll probably come in as he warms up on the sideline, taking the place of Scott Eckers, who is 8 of 14 for 103 and is just not moving that go for offense. Michigan's on top, 24 to nothing. 
They've got it once again deep in Golden Gopher territory, first and ten. He bullets up the middle and moves a pile and picks up about seven yards on the play. And downstairs we go now to the sideline and Charlene Hawk. Charlene. Kevin, when the Minnesota defense came off after the last series, uh, defensive coordinator Mark Dove sat them down. And I have to tell you, I've never seen a defensive coordinator show more calm and more patience when they're down 24 zip. And he just told them, listen, they're hurting us on the play action fake. Just hang in there and we'll be okay. And another player, uh, Dennis Capella, smiled to all the guys and said, just hang in there, stay together, we'll be okay. So there's being positive. Second down and four for Michigan. <laughs> Collins on the near side, a pass completion to Mercury Hayes. He's got the first down and he's inside the 20 yard line of Minnesota at the 18. Gain of 12 on the play. And like a surgeon, man, Collins is just picking this defense apart. Well, I, I think the reason Mark Dove is, is calm is there's not much he can do about it. Uh, you know, it's like uh, going to the dentist. You're just going to have to sit there and take your pain for a while today because there, there's not much that you can make up all the defenses you want. But if uh, you're going to get blown off the ball and you don't match up well in the secondary, you're in heap of trouble. And he's tried every gimmick he can think of, blitzing right. everything else. Davis the call. Nice cut. Nice slash from the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Michigan. <laughs> 30 nothing the Michigan Wolverines with another running touchdown. The third of the day and the first by Ed Davis. I'll tell you, at that time, the two guards, the Michigan guards, Runyon and Marinero, did a great job of finding their linebackers and putting their hat on them. And Davis hits the ball, hits the hole with such great acceleration. He was in the secondary before anybody moved. Elizabeth with another extra point try. Michigan has come out with a lot of emotion today. Ohio State is next week and their bowl possibilities very much alive. reasons why Michigan was worried coming in here was because this same Minnesota team dismantled Wisconsin a couple weeks ago. Michigan has had no such trouble today. Well, they, I don't know if they dismantled yeah, uh, you're right. That's probably against a Wisconsin, five against Illinois, but this time Michigan's not turning it over. When you run the ball up the middle and your guards and center can block like that, and you have a Wheatley and an N. Davis, plus the ability to throw the ball deep, Minnesota's caught short with a lot of problems right here. You see Jeff Rouska, the free safety, the poor guy, too much space. You can't make a tackle from that kind of depth on a running back of the caliber of Ed Davis, who probably could be starting for half the Big Ten teams. One of the sad things about college sports is there's got to be an ending playing in front of the home crowd and for a lot of seniors today for the Gophers this is their final home game and not a nice way to end things here no, in Minnesota. No I, I'm sure they'd like it to be truthful I'm sure they'd like it to end a little faster though because uh, it's going to be a long afternoon. Michigan beginning to get some players back after some injury namely Tyrone Wheatley and the effect that he has had on this game has bolstered the confidence throughout the Michigan team. I think the back to basics approach that Gary Moeller took last week against Purdue is going to pay huge dividends for the Michigan program in the future. They've had people walk off this football team they've had people question their toughness and he just said guys we're going to see who wants to play for Michigan to wear that helmet and get out there on Saturday. And they really picked it up. Hamilton to kick off. And Darkin circling under at the catch of the three. At the 15, now the 20. Chase to the 35. And gang tackled out to the 37 yard line. Got to admire Darkins uh, as we look at Shade, who apparently is going to be entering the game. You know, at this situation right now, when you're the quarterback, you come in, it's 30 to nothing. They finally put you in as the backup. You go, hey, coach, what do you want me to do? Tie it or win it? <laughs> 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 in this situation, Timmy Shade really has to just come on the game in the game and just try to make some first downs. He gets in the huddle right now and says, guys. Let's just play football. Let's forget the score and let's show that we can play even when we're behind. Have some pride. Out of first and ten. Little play action on first down. Bullets a pass. Behind the receiver, Rashawn Early. Yeah, and you wonder if Rashawn Early didn't bust his route that time because Shade really was confident where he was throwing the ball. 
Rashawn Early was going deep and Shade was throwing the hook. Shade at one time was the top throwing passing quarterback in college football but then his performance dipped in fact the Minnesota coaches were so concerned about why his play had suddenly take a turn for the worse they sent films out to UCLA and had some of their coaches how Homer Smith in particular take a look and see if they could notice any mechanical problem they didn't find any problem he's had to go up and down this year and he's way over the receivers head across the way looking for Lewis Garrison Incomplete, it'll be third and ten. The tough part for the quarterback right now in this situation coming in is you know Michigan is just going to tee off, and your, mind, your clock in your own mind, your mental clock, you know you only have about 2.5 seconds to throw the football, and so you have to drop back, hit your back step, and throw it. You don't have time to look for anyone else, so everything has to be on rhythm, and what will happen is Michigan's defensive backs will start to move up, and that's when you get the interceptions. Crumbling in a low pass. He was a near any target on that particular series. Three and out once again for the Golden Gophers in Minnesota. And the real problem for Minnesota has been their first two downs. They've had nine third downs in this football game. Seven of them have been more than third and ten yards. You're not going to pick those up. I think it really all started with that shank punt. And the, the first series when they got off the field wrong, they had a mix up and an early sack, and uh, they, they had problems. Holtzy to punt again. Uh -oh. oh, look out, it's blocked once again. Rolling to the side. Out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. I have to tell you, I've been watching football for a long time, but I've never seen anybody block one with their foot. <laughs> and that time, coming from the outside, the Michigan defender, he's coming right up the gut. He's going to jump so high, he almost jumps over the ball, and he blocks it with his foot. I've really never seen a play like that before in all the time. Tyrone Noble, a freshman from Kankakee, Illinois, is the man to get in there and block the second Minnesota punt today. With punt protection like that, guys are going to be drawing straws for the opportunity to get in there and try to block a punt. Watch it again. One more look. You see him jump, and he blocks it. <laughs> I hate to laugh because I'm sure there's a lot of Minnesota fans out there that are going to be upset. But when you over jump a block by that much, I really have never seen anything like that. Michigan. Collins to call a timeout. He's at the nine of Minnesota. Everything has gone the way of the Wolverines today, leading 31 0. Thank you very much. Great halftime in store here. Michigan rolling all over Minnesota and with a chance to score now on a first and goal. They have to go for nine. Bianca Batuka, the freshman, gets the call. He'll go in for a touchdown. Tamaka Bianca Batuka. Last week, he had 140 yards against Purdue. He was born in Zaire, Africa, moving to Canada, Montreal, 13 years ago, and learned about American football and how to speak English by watching American television. You know, there, there's some other bad news for the Minnesota football team. Because Michigan is on the road, they didn't bring enough guys to play their third string. Oh, right. Apparently going to be able to play their first two <laughs> groups. They might have to do like when you did in Little League, where the guys like say, all right, everybody, all oh, the offensive linemen, you want to run the ball? How would you and I look with the winked helmets on? Pretty good, I, I think. I'll tell you, this, this could get real. It is ugly. It could get real ugly. Well, last year, as the extra point is good, last year, Michigan beat Minnesota 63 to 13, running 66 times. And it would appear that little brown jug <laughs> is over there on that sideline and possibly going to make a trip back to Ann Arbor after today. A draw play again right side of your screen the left offensive line this time a little bit of a trap draw and you can see it Biakamatuka gets into the open Amani Toomer does a nice job blocking downfield and that's a walk in and you know what what do you call if you're the offensive coordinator now for Michigan you know you probably don't really want to run up the score much more but you know if you're running draw plays and no one's touching you into the end zone uh, what do you dial that doesn't work? Let me ask you, though, in terms of, of trying to get to the most prestigious bowl they can. They obviously can't go to the Rose Bowl, but 
Does a big win here help them as they try to climb that bowl ladder? I think a big win helps them, but I don't think it makes much difference whether they win 31 nothing or 71 nothing right now because a lot of bowl people will want the Michigan program just because of the television sense and the people they're right. draw. They'll be a, a very attractive bowl participant, but I still think you know that game next week, Ohio State. That's it. That that'd be that's their bowl game right exactly. there. Michigan with four running touchdowns in the first half and a throwing touchdown by Collins to Walter Smith. Rodney Heath, Chuck Rios, deep back. It'll be Rios at the one. And he is thrilled by Walter Smith at the 15 and spun into tomorrow. I'll tell you, Walter Smith, <laughs> he's going to be playing for a long time something. to come. He's going to be playing on Sunday because he's a very valuable football player. Running kickoffs, runs through one block. You can see Minnesota has assigned two people to block him. He runs through and flies around. You don't see many wide receivers that will play say, like that. You don't see wide receivers. And his size, 5'11", under 200 pounds. Was a running back in high school and, and is really uh, adapted. And I, I think he is the epitome of what Gary Moeller is looking for in the future at Michigan. Tim Shade is back to throw. And he finds Omar Douglas. Nice pickup of about 18 on the play. That's a first down for Minnesota. Kevin, if you take the, into account that Illinois last week ran 11 plays in 58 seconds to score against the Minnesota defense, Minnesota still got a lot of plays left if they stay in the two-minute offense. I don't think they're going to come close to winning this football game, but they probably, for pride purposes, want to move the ball. Shade again to throw. Nice pass, near side. He's got a first down to Chuck Reels. They're going long, beginning to stretch that Michigan defense. It's inside the Wolverine 30. Gain of 37 on the play. I know Jim Wacker wanted to be fair to Scott Eckers, but I really think the hot hand is Tim Shade, and he should have been in this football game earlier. He's a much better deep thrower, and you have to spread that Michigan zone. You can see the type of ball he threw on that one. He's got plenty of arm, and that's what puts pressure on a zone defense. Shade of big kick, 6'6", six, six, transferred from TCU, where Wacker came to take over the Minnesota program. In fact, Wacker and Shade's father coached together many years ago, and Shade's dad had a chance to make the Dallas Cowboys. He was the final cut. It's the deepest penetration by Minnesota all day. A little bit high as he throws to the far side, looking for Lewis Garrison. Birch on the coverage incomplete. When he throws the ball high like that, it's usually because he has someone in his face. That time it was Steve Rakowski who came. You see Shade saying, follow through, stay with the throw a little bit longer, but you got one of those six foot five defensive linemen coming right at you. It's easy to throw the ball high. Shades a 49% pass, second down and 10. Rifles it down the middle. And they're looking for the crossing Omar Douglas inside the 10. All Michigan today here in the Metrodome, downtown Minneapolis. Wolverines scoring at every possession but one. Wheatley a couple touchdowns. Minnesota's had a replacement at quarterbacks, block punts, penalties. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Third and ten for Shade. Again, no backs for Minnesota. Garrison dropping it, back pedaling out of bounds near the 20-yard line. And the coverage by Alfie Birch. Get him right in between the eight and the one that time. And now instead of being fourth and about five, where you have a good chance of picking it up, they're forced to go into a fourth and ten. And that's really tough because those linebackers and people will let you have the short throw. And it's going to be tough to pick it up now. And now it is fourth down for Minnesota. As they trail 38 to nothing. Shane. 
again another drop pass and again by Garrison. Well, I, I wouldn't really call that. I mean, that's a tough catch on that one for Garrison because the ball was behind him. He's trying to really flash into the middle. And Michigan kind of changed up that time. They used what we call a robber defense. Usually you have two free safeties deep. This time they gave the two deep look and then changed up and they played two free safeties in the middle. And everybody forced their guys to the middle of the field. And that's why the throw was behind. In a prevent feel, you think? Well, it was man to man underneath, and two free safeties playing the crossing routes, and that's why Shade had to throw the ball a little behind him. Michigan gets it back, and they've got a brand new quarterback, the Wolverines do. Jay Reimersma, sophomore from Zeeland, Michigan. He has only thrown two passes all season. But a great time for him to get some Big Ten experience. The pitch out to Ed Davis. And a block by the young freshman Richie. And again to the far sideline, about six to seven yards. Well, I think we're going to see a lot of running game for Michigan the rest of this football game. And they're going to let Remersma throw the ball occasionally, play action passes, and get him some experience at quarterback. But I think you're going to see two tight ends. I think you're going to see Davis and Bianca Patuka running the football. He's played every game this year, but uh, as we said before, he's just thrown the two passes. Down to about two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. And a second down and three. Short drop and a near side run for Alexander. Out of bounds. Coverage applied by Moses Taylor. Throwing the fade route to the outside of the field. The one thing you have to do as a quarterback, keep the ball in the playing field. That time Ramirez about threw the ball a little too wide, a little bit jacked up getting in a football game. You know, he thought he'd play, but he thought he'd play in the fourth quarter. This is great playing in the second quarter with your backup with a 38 nothing lead. Third down and three. And on to Ed Davis, so we got a big block and he's free from the 40 to the 50. Moses Taylor stops him in the secondary inside the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Dean of 26 and like a bullet, he shoots up the middle. Yeah, I think uh, that's exactly what he was like. Ed Davis is a sp former sprint champion. Tack relays in high school. He has all the speed. Every place we've gone in the Big Ten, they've all, all the coaches have mentioned Ed Davis. A lot of people were recruiting this guy, hoping that he'd go to Wisconsin, Minnesota, Purdue. There was a lot of people that thought they had a chance at Ed Davis. Pitch out, Bianca Batuka. Bianca Batuka. Ran into a couple defenders, knocked them backwards, and takes the ball down to the 32-yard line. I guess last week when they played Purdue with the Michigan PA guy would come out of Michigan Stadium, there was laughter and cheers in the stands because uh, just to get that name out like well, that. Well, I've been cheering every time you pronounce it right. <laughs> well, start waving more than I want to see. I see more animation. Real, really easy. <laughs> Bianca Matuka. Timanga. But they call him Tim, but he prefers Timanga. Am I right? Oh, you know the story well, better than well, I do. Well, he, you know, whatever, he, he prefers the ball. I know that. He can run. Second out of three. Knock him a two on the far side. And he gets the first down, angling to the sideline. He's out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Rodney Heath makes the stop. He's got some quickness, doesn't he? Kevin, you know, this, this almost reminds me, and when I when I was playing, we'd have what you call a Friday practice, or, or for the college kids, a Thursday practice where no one's allowed to hit the offense. They just give them a look, kind of hit up their linemen, and, and no one tackle in the secondary because you don't want to get anybody hurt. Michigan's running backs are turning the corner and running upfield. It looks like a practice session out there for them right now. Maybe they lost last week at Illinois. Had some far-reaching effects on this Minnesota program. And that, and as we talked early, the, 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 the horrible start, the disastrous start that they had, you can see with the sacks involved, only two yards rushing in this game. John Ritchie is hit, hit quickly. Up the middle, Kevin Holmes comes through. John Ritchie's a freshman from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, kind of a cult hero. Pennsylvania. He was recruited heavily by Penn State. Of course, Michigan beat Penn State this year, and every time they announced his name, that great stadium out there at State College, he was booed. <laughs> Passing situation again. Minnesota's very confused. They do not know what coverage they're in. Reavers going to the end zone. Down the near side. Incomplete looking for Mercury Hayes. 
And the coverage was applied on the near side by Terrence Blaine, who is a freshman, number 25. Florida State has gone up by Notre Dame, 7 0. Mike Tariq will have all that and more in college football coming up in just a few short minutes. Mercury Hayes and, and Amani Toomer, two highly sought after uh, uh, recruits two years ago who played as freshmen. Mercury Hayes got off to a tremendous start. As you look at Amani Toomer, his, uh, his mate, two sophomores, now true sophomores. But that was because Derek Alexander was hurt early and he had an opportunity to really get off fast. Eighth play of the Michigan Drive. They've got a third down and 11. Maybe a delay a game on Michigan. Play clock was down to one. And now he's showing zero. I'm Dead ball. Delay a game. Five yard penalty against the offense. Third down. Losing Ty Wheatley for Michigan was was tough, and I'm gonna go ahead. We get to well Notre Dame, Florida State. That's what everybody. Is this the game of the century? You think? Well. This week, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> if, if Florida State wins, then the Florida game and then the rematch with the Miami or uh, Florida or Notre Dame will be the next game of the century. And some great games down in the southeast. Mike Tarico will take you right through there. Third and 16 with the penalty on Michigan. Reamers mark. Good feel in the pocket. Now on the fly. Got a block from Homer Smith. <laughs> who's knocking out defensive linemen and at about the 29 yard line Reimers goes out of bounds and picks up about a yard and a half Don Williams yeah. finally makes a step Walter Smith said you know I, I, I was wide open I mean throw me the ball I'm not going to get any more of these big blocks for you if you don't throw me the ball I'm wide open throw it oh well let's go back and get the hit hey you got wide receivers that protect you like that you've got to throw them the football Hamilton is in to try a long field goal. It'll be 47 yards. Don't have enough guys on the field. And the play clock is down to 10. Michigan does have two timeouts. Minnesota with all three of theirs. Hamilton is a freshman redshirt from Boca Raton, Florida. That's the play clock you see. And the long kick from 47 yards. Good. My. For people who follow Michigan football, everything is clicking today. 41 to nothing, Michigan at halftime. Remy Hamilton had a chance to, to steal the job last week. I really think the, think the big difference for the kickers for Michigan is the turf. The grass at Michigan is very bumpy, and, and, and they've had main problems. But you can see, this is about his limit. He just barely cleared it. About four yards to spare. But as you know, special teams have been a constant source of concern for Michigan. And as you say, it's it's interesting to see him knock a 47-yard oh, yeah. field goal through. Their their special teams were were practically embarrassing last week against Purdue. They had a fumble to kick off. Derek Alexander had minus four yards and four punt returns, and and he dropped a punt return also. So you know this is when you're hitting on all cylinders. Uh, you know that that's what helped makes it 41 nothing. Of course, there's no. Not much pressure out here. Either. No, not now there is. Not when you're leading 41 zip. Seems like the strategy that Gary Moeller used a couple weeks ago is he opened up literally every job on the team. He is having some nice reaching effects and has had a, a great impact on his Michigan program. Well, yeah, and, and, and he really just had to get back to basics. You know, that, that tough loss they had against Michigan State and the shocking loss that they had to Illinois really sent them reeling. Kick off by Hamilton. Chuck Rios under at the four. And nice broken tackle. And he's out to the 29. 11 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Mike Tirico standing by with our entire crew with highlights and scores and up to the minute information on some big games in the ACC and the Southeast Conference. And an interesting day in the Big Ten as well. We'll talk more about that in our second and half. Really, our two key football games, other football games in the Big Ten, Illinois and Penn State, Starting Indiana and Ohio State, two huge games for that will determine the Rose Bowl participants. Starting later today, and we'll talk about that in our second half. Remember Shade, all six, six of them throwing it. It's intercepted on the far side by the freshman Clarence Thompson. Receiver wasn't even looking for the football that time. That's a miscommunication. 
tight end Eric Dallin wasn't even look, turning back to look. I think he was very surprised that ball was thrown. Well, obviously, he wasn't even looking for it. <laughs> he lets it rip. You're going to see Dallin. He's, he's not even looking for it going a, one way. That's a great catch. And with Clarence Thompson, great offensive play. He was a quarterback in high school and in, uh, highly sought after 4 4 speed. And this is the second year they lost Corwin Brown, as we mentioned yep. before. I mean, they, they were really hit by graduation back there. Right? And you got to believe Michigan just might take a knee and have some mercy out of here. Five seconds remaining before halftime. Either that or a I think you're right. They're going long. And a little bit high for the acrobatic attempt of Mercury Hayes. Clock down now to one second. Well, I think the strategy right there was to try to get into situation just for coaching purposes to complete a pass and try another field goal attempt. Who calls the plays? Uh, Jerry, Jerry Moeller. And, if, and, and we talked to Cam Cameron on the phone the other day, a meeting with him. He says, you know, the toughest thing I have with uh, Gary Moeller is trying to have him stick with the script. He really gets off at a time and calls plays that he just feels. And uh, Michigan, like a lot of college football teams, script their plays. Minnesota scripts the first 15 to 20 they run and Michigan does the same thing. Down to an E for Reimers. That'll end the first half of play. Well, Michigan got four rushing touchdowns. They got two long field goals of 35 and 47 yards. And Jim Wacker needs to take his team to the locker room and Gary Moeller on the other side will enjoy a 41 nothing halftime lead here from downtown Minneapolis. Golden Gophers of Minnesota, 41 0. We're at halftime from the Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, with Gary Daniels and Kevin Harlan. I guess the emotion we were looking for for Michigan has suddenly uh, come to the fore here. Huh? They're, they're yeah. playing some pretty oh, good football. A lot more than emotion. I mean, they've really just taken over this football game. Their talent, speed, and and really the, the mistakes that uh, Minnesota made early in this football game has really haunted them. And you have to say last week's tough loss probably has come and really set in a lot more uh, with the reality of what happened to them also. And taking a look now at some of the halftime statistics that Jim Wanker and his staff were contemplating. Michigan's got the lead in first downs. Passing has uh, been very accurate for the Michigan Wolverines. On the ground, though, that's the big change, Gary, 138-2. to two. Yeah, and also factor in there the sacks that Minnesota had. That's the reason they only have two yards rushing. They, they've gotten behind in the, the down uh, count where they've not been able to run the ball because of down and distance situations. Two straight weeks, Michigan last week only allowed Purdue eight yards rushing, and this week only two yards at halftime for Minnesota. And I think the average start, the field position, was the, the other key. Michigan ran 39 offensive plays in the first half. 26 of them happened in plus territory past the 50-yard line. That's very tough on a, Mi a Minnesota defense. What do you think Gary Muller is going to do offensively in this second half? Try, try to play anybody he can find on, on offense. <laughs> and like we said before, uh, you know, they, they only probably brought the first and second unit, right. and uh, Minnesota is not going to have any alternative but to face guys who want to score in every series. Jim Wecker just has to tell his guys now for Minnesota in this situation, forget the score. We're playing for pride now. We're playing to see who's going to quit, who's going to stand in there and play their best football. And then this is where you see, find out who the men are on your football team. In the final home game for many seniors. It's a, it's a tough way to finish it. Uh, unfortunately, that in pro sports, uh, I mean, college sports, nobody really has any mercy when you're down. They kick you. Bonnie Toomer and Bianca Batuka lead back for Michigan. And it'll be the youngster Toomer on the fly at about the 11. Got a block. A little foot race to the 25. Look at the speed burners turning on. Got a great block for Bianca Batuka. Another broken tackle into Minnesota territory at the Golden Gopher 42 yard line. Brandon Mays makes the stop. Wait, a fumble on the play. A fumble and Minnesota's recovered. Well, Amani Toomer that time showed brilliant speed outrunning the coverage for Minnesota. Moses Taylor, number seven, is the guy who he thought had the ankle, but right at the end of this play, he gets hit, and the ball, and you, and you really can't tell if his knee came down or not, but for the Gophers, Craig Sauer is the guy who ended up on the, on the football, a uh, sophomore linebacker. And, at least Minnesota is going to start with the football in the second half. And the coach's nephew will be the starting quarterback. 
they put back in Eckers. Eckers is back in as the quarterback. He started the game and he fires a pass wide and incomplete. Looking for Rashad early. Now, tell me what's going on with this quarterback situation. Uh, I have to believe now with Eckers back in the football game that Shade's ankle must not be 100%, and he has not, not full mobility out there because uh, in this situation, you know, a, a, a change probably is the, the right thing to do. But uh, also in this situation, Kevin, I, I don't know if anybody really wants to volunteer to play quarterback in the second half. <laughs> do, do you want to get out there? Yeah. <laughs> Shane was two for ten with an interception going into the half. But in fairness, he had a few drops too. No running backs. Edwards. Rashawn Early. And a first down for Minnesota near the 48-yard line of Michigan. Jason Horn there, a heavy metal fan. Scott Eckers is. Tackle made by Horn. Eckers listens to the group Metallica. That's his favorite group. In fact, he has driven hundreds of miles to follow his group and before games has the headset and the yep. Walkman on listening to heavy metal music. Yeah, he wishes he was at a concert right now, I'll tell you that. Because it's going to be a little more nasty than a heavy metal concert, and those are pretty bad. And when you consider that head coach Jim Wacker, there's Shade. Horn is still down in the, or is it Deion Johnson? Now let's go downstairs to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Kevin, when Coach Wacker left the field, he told me he was looking for the answers. And in the locker room, it was very, very quiet. And Coach Wacker was quiet himself beyond yelling. He said, um, he said that just to go out and do, do what you can do. Coach Muller, on the other hand, came out very relaxed, very positive, as you might imagine, that uh, he was very pleased with his team's effort. And he did add that Ricky Powers, who hasn't seen action since he fumbled the ball during the Wisconsin game, it cost him a game, he will be playing today. It's a very good point, Charlene, because Powers is one of the co-captains on this team and a leader on this ball club, isn't he? He is, and it has been very difficult on him not to be able to play. It's um, been very much of a mental thing for him to try and regroup after some costly fumbles. Right now, it's Minnesota with the first and ten just inside the Michigan 49. Hits the tight end. Eric Galen, it's a first down flag cut on the play. Tackle made by Diolo Anderson. Kansas State an early lead. Army on top of Lafayette at the half. That's the second key pass play. Well, in Minnesota's thinking, I mean, anything is key right now that's successful just to keep their defense off the field. They get another holding penalty that's cost them big time holding. yardage. Offense. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. First reception by a tight end in this ball game. And again, the, the penalty is from the point of the foul, so it ends up being a big penalty. That'll be first and 25 for Minnesota. Gophers came in two today, three and three in the Big Ten, four and five overall. Evans. Pumps it off across the middle punt by Chuck Rios. And he is upended, taken down. Yellow Anderson once again there. He's a freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. And Jared Irons makes yet another tackle for the Michigan defense. I'll tell you, Michigan does not want to see this. Gerald Irons coming off the field limping. Jared Irons, one of the few linebackers they have healthy and coming into next week when they have to play Ohio State. And by the way, Ohio State's going to run the ball in that football game. They're going to need healthy linebackers. He's let them in tackles last four straight games. You can see this play right here. Irons is chasing. And it looks like he gets his foot trapped a little bit by his own tackler coming in from the opposite side. Or no back for Michigan. Or for Minnesota. This is an offense which has a lot of its roots in the Miami of Florida offense and Dennis Erickson. The coaches here have spent time with the Miami staff looking at their passing schemes. Well, the, 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 it works well on a chalkboard, but if you don't have the blocking, nothing works well. Michigan is playing two free safeties, one short and then one deep. And all these people out here are forcing their men inside of the two free safeties. That's why the Shade and Eckers and all the quarterbacks are having trouble finding somebody because everybody's forcing their receivers into the free safeties. Third down. 
They caught it inside. Ball is loose. Fumble recovered by Minnesota back at their 22. Same coverage, and one of the things Bob the Best said that he had a problem with his offense is the wide receivers do not do a good job of getting off the jams. Michigan has moved up their secondary. They play man coverage with outside technique. And as Eckers drop back, drops back to pass here, he really has no one to throw as Dyson and Horn and Stanley meet at the pass. Mike Kimball will be back to punt for the Golden Gophers. His first one went 12 yards. Deep back Mercury Hayes given a fair catch as he looks into the bright lights of the Metrodome. I'll tell you who I'd like to see run the ball a little bit in this football game is Ricky Powers. Yeah. It'd be nice for him as a senior captain who's had a great attitude as he's gotten a, a few key fumbles and then lost the ball. And it'd be a nice thing, I believe, to get him back in this football game. And I'm sure his teammates would really come out and congratulate him and, and really get excited to see Ricky Powers carry the football. Well, he's fumbled twice at key moments. Charlene gave us a story a couple minutes ago. And he is still well liked by this team. One of the co-captains, as we said. Todd Collins is back in at quarterback. And here's Tyrone Wheatley running up the back of his own offensive lineman. Trying to follow the block of Thomas Gines, who's a freshman from Kankakee, Illinois. Yeah, Gines has really made a difference. A six foot five freshman, 299 pounds. He runs well at that left tackle position and the starter, Trezell Jenkins, who's usually playing left tackle in the new realignment of the Michigan offense, a little bit of a disciplinary problem with the coaching staff. He's not playing in this football game, and maybe they found a new player. Second down and eight. Play fake by Collins, going long. Looking for Amani Tumor. He catches the ball at the 10, drags a defender inside the five, and he's down at the two. That was Taylor some, and Heath knocked him down. That was some catch by Amani wow. Tumor. He basically caught that right off the defender. I think it was Rodney Heath, number six, and he caught it right on his shoulder pad. The ball was slightly underthrown, and the game plan that Michigan is using, throw deep. They think they have a mismatch against the corners for Minnesota, and you can see the ball slightly underthrown, and he catches it just as he's trying to be ripped through by Heath and holds on to the ball. I think what is hard for people to believe is that Michigan is only five and four this year with this kind of an offense. Well, they, they've lost two big games with turnovers late in the game. Tyrone Whitley looking for his third touchdown. He plows it to the one. Wow. Very close to the goal line. Russ Heath is the man who tried to bring him down like a rodeo cowboy. Burkholder, number 80, the tight end this time, is driving his linebacker right into the end zone. You can see Chafe, Chafe Foster get a block, and, and that was a good call. His shoulder hit before the line, and uh, it's going to be second down in inches for a touchdown. Tight end Burkholder. Look at cut back to the line of scrimmage. Zemius from the secondary makes the stop and Jerome Davis from the line gave an assist. Well, you can see the Minnesota players. They're playing as hard as they can play. That was decent coverage on Amani Toomer on that long pass. And now two straight plays. They stopped the Tyrone Wheatley short of the touchdown. And, you know, that's about all Jim Wacker can ask from these guys. Three tight ends now for Michigan. to the freshman, John Ritchie. He can't pile it in. Now in that second quarter, the Irish and the Seminoles tied at seven. Look at Nebraska on top of Iowa State up in Lincoln. And Auburn undefeated still, leading Georgia. What a game they've got down in South Carolina today. Look at that. Yeah, the way those Florida team plays, most games end up that way. <laughs> Oklahoma on top of Oklahoma State. Pat Jones has never beat Oklahoma while he's been at Oklahoma State. Well, they're going to go for it now on fourth down and goal to go. Wheatley is in the game. 
Wheatley's got a block and he's got his third touchdown of the day. Wheatley walks basically into the end zone because of Burkholder's block. The tight end, number 80. Watch him fit on Russ Heath, number 91. And Wheatley, with his speed, knew he could just trot into the end zone. When a team is pinching and gambling, and you have to do that when it's inches to go for a touchdown, you have to put the pinch on. That was a good call by the Michigan staff to take it outside. That's the fifth running touchdown today and the third by Tyrone Wheatley. That's his 38th career, second all-time at the University of Michigan, bettering Desmond Howard by one. The Michigan Wolverines led by Tyrone Wheatley all over Minnesota. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten College Football is brought to you by the New Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, and by Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. Next week they play for the pig. Brother, in Iowa City against Iowa. Well, the goal was to get all three of them. Uh, they're the best they're going to do is two of them. Yeah. The axe and the pig. Well, if you got a guys, a bunch of guys that are hungry on this Minnesota team, that pig may be <laughs> more to them. Well, they're going to get some food afterwards. Elizabeth to kick off for Michigan. Heath circling under at the catch at about the seven. Get spun around to the 23. Very quick scoring drive by Michigan on that last play. A series, I should say. Six plays, a little over three minutes. Wheatley is third touchdown run of the day. Yeah, and of course, the big play was Amani Toomer's long catch on the play action pass. And really, he was covered pretty well, but. Uh, on a slightly underthrown ball, he just made the great grab. Eckers in as the quarterback who started the game. With some play action, he looks down the middle and looks for Omar Douglas from New Orleans. There's the ball. I think Eckers would like to go deep with the ball a little bit. It seems like the Michigan zone is setting on everything, and he wants to get the ball down the field. Side. And Douglas picks up 19 yards on the play of the all-time leading receiver in the history of the University of Minnesota. And, and the, the real reason an S play worked is that Eckers had time to pump fake one, let Douglas clear the middle linebacker or the short free safety in the zone right there and hit him on the other side of the zone. And uh, you know, if he has that type of time, he'll be able to do that. But Michigan only rushed three players. I think you're going to see the four-man rush most of the time now. Play action and uh, go to the tight end. And a pick up the block six. Eric Dalen makes the reception. And the tackle made by Bobby Powers coming up from the linebacker. Gore, he is from River Ridge, Louisiana. Yeah, and uh, as you look, Notre Dame taking the lead. Just as I predicted. No, I, no I predicted no, Florida State well. by two touchdowns. You're a partner today of mine, so man, anything you say, I'm a believer. Right? I'm always wrong. <laughs> 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 Second down and three for Minnesota, trailing 48 to nothing. Across the middle, dropped by Rashad early, but he had a guy climbing all over his back. As Deion yeah, Johnson, yeah, number Deion 28, Johnson. that time. And, and the, what Michigan has decided to do now in these passing situations is just lock on the receivers. They do not have a lot of respect for the uh, pass protection. They know they're going to get to Eckers sooner or, or, or fairly quick, and that they don't have to cover that long. Michigan defense in the third quarter has only allowed 17 points all season. They have really buckled up. In the third period, just after halftime this year. There's a third and three. Long, he's got Douglas. Nice defense across the way by Alfie Birch. The 
reason Elfie Birch can cover that post corner route so well is he knows he has help in the middle of the field so that he can bite on the outside cut and leave the inside cut for his extra free safety. Otherwise, that would be tough coverage. Well thrown ball, good route, but if you only have to cover the guy to the outside, you have a chance to make that play. Mike Kimball, oh, it's a fake. Back to the up man and thrown down the near sideline, and it's a first down for Minnesota. Jeff Rosda, a former quarterback, now a defensive back, and some trickery by Coach Jim Wacker, a gain of 20, and a first down for the Golden Gophers. Well, Kazemius is the guy that threw it there as the up back, and uh, that's a play that if this would have been a four or five or a, or a two touchdown game, this is a big play. But, uh, you know, you got to give them credit. They worked at it. They knew they had it in their arsenal, and hey, why not use it? First and 10 for Minnesota. Handoff. Going long into the end zone. Diving reception touchdown. Tight end Eric Dalen. Did you say something about Michigan's defense giving up 17 points <laughs> the entire third quarter this season? Well, you got to admire the, the Minnesota kids. I mean, they, re they didn't realize it's 48 to nothing. They're hanging in there playing hard, and the credit should go to Jim Wacker. He has to get his kids to play hard the second half, and so far they have. Mike Chalbert from Auckland, New Zealand, with the extra point for the Golden Gophers. 48 to 7 is the score. Jim Wacker's team knocks off that goose egg, and they get on the board halfway through the third quarter. Nice touchdown pass by the Gophers as they get on the board. Kevin, we were talking about where a defensive back has his help. In this situation, Clarence Thompson is right here. Here's the free safety, and here's the man he's covered. Watch how he comes out on his pattern, and if we can stop the play right about here, look at Thompson knows he has help inside. He should not go for the fake. The young freshman does on the post fake, takes one step in. That's all you need. Eckers does a nice job of throwing it to the corner, and Dallin does a nice job of making the catch. But that's what you're talking about. As a defensive back, you have to know where your help is. He took one false step inside, and it cost him. Scott Eckers, who throws the touchdown pass, his uh, 14th of the season. And the kickoff, hauled in by Amani Tumor at the five. At the 20. There's a flag, and he's out to the 27 yard line. You hear me holler? They're holding. 48 7, Michigan with the lead, midway through the third quarter. Here's Rod Winner, our Big Ten our referee today. It's against Michigan. Let's check in with Mike Tarico, Mike. And let's check in what's happening in the ACC. Clemson, boy, Virginia just can't get it done there. Chris Franklin, 16 yard run. Four Simeon Willis interceptions. The Tigers lead late in the fourth quarter there. Watson came in, six and three. Virginia seven and two. That's a surprising one for me. I thought Virginia, they showed me a lot against the second half against Florida State. And, uh, I, I really expected them to win that football game. The Cavaliers have never won down enough Bell. Well, Michigan has their worst starting field position of the day. Back at their 16. Collins, the quarterback. And Wheatley, the ball carrier. A block for the win. That's a fumble oh, after the hit, but they're going to rule him down. They'll rule him down at the 23-yard line. And a gain of seven. Narcisse. Rod Narcisse makes the stop, number 37, in the secondary for Minnesota. Tyrone Wheatley. Right now, Kevin, Michigan has on their offensive line, the left side of their line, really, with Gwines, Runyon, and Rod Payne in at center. Three freshmen playing That's at one amazing. time on the line. And this is usually a line dominated by seniors and juniors, isn't it? Absolutely. That's the big change they had to overcome this year, and they're starting to find themselves on the offensive line. It's going to be a very tough football game for Ohio State next week. I think Michigan has really found their pace. 
Coming into this game, there was a lot of talk about the Michigan substitution pattern, but it really has not been an issue today, has it? No, it really hasn't. And I think ball. most people are, are, are comfortable start. with it now. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Who does it affect most, the, the defense or maybe even the referees who have no feel for what's going <laughs> no, on? No, it, it affects us the most. We can't show any highlights. We, <laughs> we never know when they're going to uh, snap the ball. Look at Notre Dame over Florida State. Oh, goodness. Georgia Tech on top of Wake Forest. Second down and eight for Michigan. Collins is going to have to run. He's set. Back at the 14-yard line, first sack today, and Dennis Capella with the sack. Second team all Big Ten a season ago. See, this time, this is a coverage sack. Collins is ready to throw the ball, but Minnesota is squatting on it. Capella does a little bit of a spin move, beats Sullivan back inside, but... Minnesota's defensive backs continue to squat at about the 10 to 15 yard spot. Michigan has to go deep. Third and 11. They take by Collins. Low pass. Incomplete. 25 yard line. Again, across the way for Tumor, guarded by Narcisse, number 37. Nice coverage. And for just for the third time today, Michigan has got a punt. I'll tell you, Kevin, Narcisse. And, and on the bottom, Hunter, number two, never took one step beyond the first down line. They just stood there at 15 yards. Both of, both of Michigan's receivers were going to the first down marker and hooking, and the coverage was too tight. Collins had to throw the ball low to be safe. Stable in the punt. He back is Aaron Osterman. Rushes on, comes away. Near midfield. And he gets inside the Michigan 40. Young man who had to go through some stomach surgery had ulcers. But taking care of that, he's back today, Hale and Hardy, and has a nice return down to the Michigan 37 yard line. Michigan's, Michigan's got a big lead here late in the third quarter of play with Gary Daniels and Kevin Harlan from the Metrodome to Charlotte Hawks watching the sideline. And Michigan on defense. Minnesota hits their tight end. Halen takes it down the far sideline inside the 35. Yeah, well designed. I'm Anderson. sorry, Kevin. Well designed play, a throwback uh, screen to the tight end. Dallin comes up, looks like his uh, arm, his left arm got hit. You're going to see the quarterback roll one way and then throw back to the tight end screen the opposite way. He gets pasted pretty good, by the way, the quarterback after he throws it. But all that, and Michigan does a good job of staying home, and they only pick up three, four yards on the play. He may have a stinger. Second down and seven. Way he was holding that arm. Out of the blitz. Oh my goodness. Throw it away, and that's what he does. Flags are thrown down the near sideline. Chuck Winters came flying in from that secondary. You're going to get holding on Ty Law, I think, uh, on the bottom down here. Holding uh, Oosterman. Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator. <laughs> you saw Ty Law. He, on a defense. Lloyd Carr. It's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. You saw Lloyd Carr yell, Ty Law, come here. <laughs> <laughs> and you just run over there and take it. Safety blitz. Winners is going to come right up the middle. Right on him. Eckers does a good job of getting rid of the ball, but holding on the bottom of the field, the receiver wasn't even in the play. Law played a great deal last year as a true freshman for Michigan. That goes the play fake to Darkins. He's going long. He's got a receiver. Oh, and he dropped it in the end zone. That is Rashawn Early. He's dropped a couple passes today. 
He dropped a couple of them early in this game, right? He did. <laughs> that was a beautiful throw. He had man-to-man -man coverage, and his try to, instead of trying to cross them that time, they ran seam routes. The free safety could not be involved in this throw, and he puts it right on Deion Johnson as the guy was in coverage, but that took, the drop, took a drop pass, or that would have been seven more points for Minnesota. You gotta admire him. It's 7-7 in the second half, and if, you know, it's not really, if you've never done it before, played in a game when you're behind and you're out of it, it is tough to do. Second out of 10 for Minnesota. Drop ball. Chuck Rios. From Little Canada, Minnesota. Flag thrown on the play as he tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Holding call on the Gophers this time. Minnesota is the most penalized football team in the Big Ten, and it's hurt them in this football game all day. They've had seven penalties in the game, and they came in this game as the most penalized team in the Big Ten. Holding. Offense. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. That's Bob DeBess walking right in front of Jim Wacker, the offensive coordinator. Not the guy with the bowl cut, too. He's got a hat on. There's our there coach. There's our coach. Father of three little girls. Well, two girls and then their son, didn't you say? Well, that's right. Yeah, that's an excuse. He had long hair. He had long hair. Comes it off of the flat. Caught by Antonio Cook. And Antonio Carter with the reception. We send it off to Mike Tirico. Mike. Kevin, here's what's going on in the SEC. South Carolina, Florida. Steve Tannehill moving the Gamecocks down the field. Hits Mike Reddick. Mark it out at the two. And South Carolina punched a field goal in from there to take a three-point lead. The perfect team in the SEC. Auburn leading Georgia. It's Frank Sanders, the touchdown catch. You know, Kevin, I saw Stan White, Auburn quarterback, play as a freshman. And it seems like he's been there forever. He so uh, he, he really is a talented football player. And uh, Perry Bowden has done a nice job utilizing him. It looks like Michigan's going to come with the blitz. Here they come for the secondary. The pass down the middle. Omar Douglas cannot find the handle. Up the middle, Chuck Winters was coming right through, as was Jason Horn. Yeah, Alfie Burke did a nice job that time, number seven. He had Douglas, who's a real speed receiver, and he knew he had nobody deep. He knew the ball was going to be thrown, but it had to be perfect. Winters is going to come free. Eckers does a nice job getting rid of it, but you can see Birch able to just get in his hand. And his technique here is when the receiver reaches, he reaches. Actually gets his hand in there and busts up the play. That's good defense by Birch. Well, here is a attempt of 46 yards on a field goal. He is only three of seven, Schalberg is, between 40 and 49. He's got the distance, but he's wide. Wide to the right. Now we're down to 352 remaining in the third quarter. I, I think Michigan has lost their focus a little bit in this football game. You know, you go into halftime with such a big lead, 41 to nothing, and then you come out in the second half, and the first string, the first guys who they had halftime, they're thinking that they're going to go out there and drink Gatorade, and they're back in the football game. Well, coming up tomorrow, week 11 of the NFL Game Day and NFL Primetime. Join Chris Berman and the gang at noon Eastern for NFL Game Day. And then at 7 o'clock, Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann readying themselves at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. And there's Ricky Powers, young man who fumbled twice at key moments last couple of games, senior co-captain. He was about as recruited a player as there was in high school yeah, football. Akron Bucktell, and he had a great freshman year. And, uh, you know, I think everybody in this football team would like to see Ricky Powers have a successful drive right here. And Jay Reamers is back in, the backup quarterback for Michigan. We'll get you up to date on some changes for Gary Moeller and the Wolverines. On a second down and four, here comes Ricky Powers leading his way through traffic, picking up the Michigan first down to the 41-yard line. You know, we did the Michigan-Wisconsin game when he had that unfortunate fumble against Wisconsin, and he had a great drive in that game. I mean, he ran the ball right down the field, got down, and there was a lot of question whether his knee was down or not, but uh, it was a traumatic fumble for Ricky. He had his hands in his uh, on his head, and he, he really didn't want to talk to, it, to really anyone. And it's really hard to blame him, but he's had a good attitude about it and uh, worked hard, and he's having an opportunity to play. Please, please, please. 
First and ten. It's out to Powers. Got a block. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Ricky Powers rumbling off on the far side for a gain of about nine out to midfield. Tackle made by Penzinius from the secondary, number 20 for Minnesota. And you can see guys patting him on the head, and uh, they got a minute out of there. And, and, and watch Ed Davis and the guys on the sideline just pat him as he comes over here now. Everybody's going to say, that's the way to run the ball, Ricky. Way to hang in there. Very popular player on this team, which makes it even more difficult when a guy with that kind of popularity and the co-captain of your team is, <laughs> is not playing. It, it's, uh, it's not an easy game or an easy sport. Second down to one. Michigan leads it 48 to seven. Tyrone Wheatley with the block. Boy, and then Minnesota reads it well, and Russ Heath Makes the stop coming from the middle linebacker position. Yeah, Trezell Jenkins, number 77, is in at right tackle that time, and Capella had an outside charge on it. He was not able to hook him. That's one of those situations, though. Capella does his job properly and it makes a nice play, but that was a tough block for Jenkins. It was an outside play, and he just really couldn't hook him. Second half of this football game, and you, 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 admittedly, Michigan's lost their focus a bit, but uh, it's still 7-7. Seven seven. Third and five. A lot of receivers out there for Reimers. Month. Moves around in that pocket. He does not have the first down. Picked up a couple on the play out near the 48. Had to get to the 49, 48-yard line of Minnesota. It's a funny pattern that time for, uh, for Michigan. I think they were expecting the blitz, and Minnesota didn't give it to them. They only sent out two receivers on the play. Minnesota dropped in the zone, and there was nobody to throw to. Well, Minnesota's played a much better second half than first. There is no doubt about that. Michigan seems to have lost a bit of their emotion for the first half. It's, it's hard to blame. They're probably yeah, I agree. watching the Florida State Notre Dame game. <laughs> <laughs> Osterman deep back for the punt coming from Stapleton. Osterman waving that arm. Landon back in at the one. Kick into the end zone. Touchback to the 20. That's a punt of 52 yards. Stapleton from Springfield, Illinois. Averaging about 40 yards per punt. I'd remind you at the conclusion of this game today, Gary and I will be choosing our Kelly Springfield players of the game. We'll select an outstanding performer from each team on behalf of the Kelly Springfield Tire Company. Michigan right now may be getting a lot of those honors as they lead it 48 to 7. Here they come, the defense this time, not the offense. The defense assembling late. That's a quick throw, and it's caught by Chuck Rios, and he gets a block, and he gets a first down. Taking it down the near sideline to about the 34-yard line, gain of 14. <laughs> well, Michigan was having a meeting on the sideline. <laughs> Minnesota was up there ready to snap the ball. And in this situation, they're playing a lot of uh, secondary people right now. A lot of people playing for Michigan's defense. He's trying to probably find the right 11 people to get out there. Eckers has done a nice job coming back from a rough first half. A I lot agree. of sacks and, sacks and has come back and, you know, and, and performed admirably. Eckers to throw at the far side. And the reception by Omar Douglas. And he's out to the 38. Time has expired here in the third quarter of play. Minnesota's come back just a bit. Nonetheless, Wolverines 48 to 7. Had a tight 7 7 contest here in the third quarter. Michigan, Minnesota. Uh oh, oh, no, no, don't pull back. Oh, <laughs> I guess you got to give the whole score, to be honest, don't you? It all adds up to 48 7. Second down, six, first play in the fourth quarter. They hit Rashad early. He's got a first down and some room to roll. Inside the 40, inside the 35. And add 50. And late hit. Hit. Yeah, late hit by the freshman Thompson. Number 17. I'm a little surprised if they don't get called here. Thompson is going to grab him by the shirt, and he won't let go. There was no flag. That was the ball on the 35-yard line. Early's going to come across. This is definitely a 15-yard penalty. I mean, this is the Early's going to cross, little pitch and catch across the middle of the field, turns it outside. Thompson's going to come from the right side of your screen, latch onto it. 
get him out of bounds, and then throw him down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't hurt, but it's a penalty. First and ten, Minnesota. No action again. Deep down the near side with the receiver. It's picked off by Ty Long. Long's got blockers. To the 20. To the near side from behind, taken down, and a flag thrown with the face mask called on Minnesota. Lewis Garrison with the penalty and with the tackle. The Minnesota fans aren't happy with this because of the face mask call, which was a penalty, but they're just looking back to the last play that they thought was a penalty also. Eckers tried to look off, but he sailed the ball just a bit high, and Law was able to break on the ball and make a nice interception on the play. So Eckers, tough throw, but he's trying to make things happen. Face mask, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Nice catch that time by Law. Turns it back upfield. I thought for a second he might be able to take this the whole way, Looked but like coming it, back from the outside, Garrison grabs him by the face mask, and that was a penalty. Quarterback will be Reimersma. Wheatley will be in the backfield. Monty Tumor will be a receiver. I'll tell you, if uh, Michigan didn't have those breakaway chin straps, there'd be some people hurt this game. Pitch out to Wheatley. He's already got three rushing touchdowns today. Shea Foster with his lead block. In about nine. You know, Kevin, I think might, some people might be asking, why is Ty Wheatley running with this type of score? Aren't you risking injury? I think Ty Wheatley needs work. Right. I mean, they're coming into a big game next week. He hasn't played the two previous games. He has to get in shape, not just by running, but by running the football in a game like this. How about his carries and yardage today? 21 carries so far, 72 yards. Had a nice afternoon. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, it's one of these games where he could have 250 yards if they wanted to feature him. Yard to go and again nine by Whitley. Second down and one. Ricky Powers making a tackle, breaks another. He's got the first down with extra effort by midfield of the 49-yard line. Capella again, the deep left defensive end is on an outside charge, and Trezell Jenkins just isn't quick enough to handle the undersides. Capella, Capella just beating him upfield, and Ricky Powers did a great job as you see Capella smiling on the plays that hey, where's the other 10 guys? I'm turning them back to you. Powers gets outside, reverses his field, and makes the first down. And I think the idea with Ricky Powers, and maybe the one of the mistakes they made in that Wisconsin game, is he needs to stay fresh. He has not played a lot. At the end of that Wisconsin drive, he was a little bit tired when he fumbled that ball. Bianca Biakabatuka in the game. It's the pitch up to Biakabatuka. And again, it's a couple. We pitch it out to Mike Tirico. Here's what's going on in the Florida-South Carolina game. Backed up to their own end zone, down three. Dangerous play here. Look at Jack Jackson escape a near safety, break free down the sidelines. A play that'll cover over 75 yards and set up an Eric Rutt run. Right now, Florida has the lead there, 30-26. Meantime, a Bryce Hunter catch has Georgia back within two touchdowns. Back to the Bianca Patuka boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Florida was favored by 14 points in that game against South Carolina today. Boy, I tell you, can you believe that pass right on the goal line? Oh. From one second, it's a safety. The next second, it's a, he's running down the field for a 75-yard game. Spurrier is not afraid to try no, anything, is no. he? Steve will throw the ball coming out of the locker room. The Bianca Batuka boys, I like that. <laughs> hey, well, once you learn the name, you're stuck doing their games the rest of the year. You know? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. You can earn a you can earn a career just by being able to pronounce his name. Great kid, very quick. Born in Africa. Now playing for Michigan. First and 21 with the penalty. Screen pass. And he dumped it off to Ed Davis. He's got an entourage to lead him on the side. Breaking a tackle. Look at everybody chasing him. Post to a first down. Craig Sauer swiped him from the side. Pick up a 21. I wonder if Johnny Johnson, the Illinois quarterback, called that play because the story behind it was Johnny Johnson <laughs> called that play against Minnesota when it was 23 seconds to go. This time Davis is going to get inside. It was not man-to-man -man coverage. You can see Minnesota in the zones, but Payne fits. Another fit to the outside, and Davis with a great burst when he turns up field. Davis is fast. 
And again, back to a point we made earlier, Michigan not sitting around waiting for something to happen. No, they, they just need to make first downs. I mean, they've got their younger players in, and this is important for Mizra. Mirzma to play and throw the ball. Powers. Starting, cutting, dancing by the 35. Tackle made by Capella. As we take a look at college football today, Vanderbilt on top of the Naval Academy Air Force with all that running on top of Utah. Baylor Bears shutting out Rice halftime. Southern Miss of Memphis State. Out of the Liberty Bowl tied seven. Second down and six for Michigan. I wonder Michigan's going to be going bowling if they do end up with a win today in well, Ohio State it, Tough. It's next really going to at one be uh, looking at what Illinois does, what Indiana does today. It's yes. have a lot of determination. Reamer spot. Quick out. Caught by Hayes. Mercury Hayes. At about by Rod Narcisse. What a great name for a wide receiver, Mercury Hayes. And Mercury Hayes was an outstanding basketball player coming out of uh, high school from out in Texas. And a lot of people thought that he would be a better basketball player than a football player. I mean, a great future. The skill positions for Michigan are set into the future. And now, with the advancement of their young offensive line, you have to really say that everything's set for Michigan to have a great year coming in to 19, next season, football season, 1994. Draw play, Powers. He muscles up the middle and carves out about two, maybe three yards. I would bet that Michigan is going to try to get a touchdown for Ricky Powers in the, in the, on this drive. I would think That's that a good the, point. the staff and uh, everybody involved in it would like to see him have some success on this drive. For much up here as it is just on well, the Well, for a kid who went four years through a program, a, a, a guy who started as a freshman, you know, uh, all Big Ten player, and uh, now as a senior, he stuck it out, hasn't complained, hasn't ripped anybody in the paper by losing his job to Wheatley. He deserves it. Second down eight for Michigan. Pitch out to Powers, end around to Hayes. The quarterback will throw a block. He's got the first down, walks the tightrope, takes the ball inside the 15 near the 11. Eight of 15 on the play. Well, Mirzma was going to throw a block. He just couldn't <laughs> catch up to anybody to do it. Uh, but it was, he faked a good block on this one. You'll see it. Powers is going to get the pitch. John Ritchie, number 40, the fullback, is going to take the end man on the line of scrimmage. And Mercury Hayes gets it coming back the other way. Going to the outside. And he's got a nice straight arm for a wide receiver, too. He shakes off the first tackle and gets pushed out of bounds about the 11 yard line. Ricky Powers went off the field a little bit tired. Oh, he's, he's over there on a knee right now. Yeah, he better better be careful. They might score before he gets back on the field. I think he's uh, maybe a little bit sick. Right, right, Omaha. Let's not get a shot at him. There he is right there. <laughs> Eighth play of the Michigan drive. Pass the bucket to uh, Ricky Powers. And Davis slipping. And he may have picked up about a half yard on the play. There's Powers, a bit winded. Down to about 10.50, clock ticking here in the fourth quarter with Charlene Hawks and Gary Daniels and Kevin Harlan from the Metronome in downtown Minneapolis. And outside, if you are interested, it's beautiful, it's 72 inside, outside it's about 35, raining, foggy, cold. It's great to be indoors. John Ritchie and Bianca Batuco in the game. Two freshmen. On second 11, he wants to find Amani Tuner in the corner. Guarded by Juan Hunter. Incomplete bad. I think it's the third time they've tried that today. Well, it's a staple of the Michigan offense. They come out, read the coverage. They either run the slant or the fade, and it's a timing route. The ball's on the way. This time again, Hunter, number two, sat and squatted at about 10 or 12 yards and got a little bit of a chuck on Tumor. And I saw the Michigan staff upset with it, but I thought it was pretty good coverage on the play. Coming now, will be third and 11. Reaver 
first one. Big hit. Catch made by a leaping Amani Tumor inside the 10 and near the 6. Yeah, Jeff Rosga, the free safety, was able to come up that time, watch Reimersma's eyes and just be right on the play. And he really does break on the wall, ball well for a free safety. His problem is it's tough for him to match up man-to-man -man with his speed. See Rosga, the free safety, play a little bit of a combo coverage, sitting right in the middle of the field, comes up with a nice hit to save the first down play. Peter Elizabeth, who's kicked a couple field goals today, will try a 23-yarder right here. He has kicked one from 35 and 47 yards. And his kick is up and true. 51 to 7, Michigan. Well, maybe all those people are coming over to our game now, huh? It's a big halftime. And... Let's buckle up. <laughs> Straighten out our ties, huh? <laughs> well, 51 7, you know. I want to correct something I said moments ago. Hamilton is the one who kicked the 47 yard field goal. Elizabeth has kicked the two smaller field goals. And it was Hamilton out of Boca Raton, Florida, that kicked the long 47 yarder for Michigan. Lead back, Rodney Heath will take it out. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Can't break the third, and coming from behind was Steve King. Plays in the secondary. You don't think things have not changed at Michigan. Michigan brought 18 freshmen to this football game. Well, offsides against Michigan, you know, you got to wonder if they just don't take it and run it again. That's been a good play. You can gain a lot of yards. Gary, you were telling us last night at dinner that, that this Michigan team was boasting like they had not boasted before Offside. in terms of what they wanted to accomplish team. this year. No, I wouldn't Runners call it play. boasting, but I, I think that the they, they raised their standards. Michigan guys said, hey, we want to play for a national championship. And I think Gary Moeller wants that, too. He says they want to set their sights like the Miamis and the Florida States and Notre Dame and say, hey, we play with those guys. We want to win a national championship. It kind of bit them a little bit this year because they just did not have the talent up front and the injuries at linebacker that really came back to haunt them. Their quarterback is Tim Shade. And with the delayed handoff is to Antonio Carter. Antonio Carter's from Columbus, Ohio. Grew up 15 minutes away from Ohio Stadium. Thought about the Buckeye program, but they recruited another running back by the name of Robert Smith, and so he chose Minnesota. Little did he know the problem that uh, Robert Smith would have at Ohio State. Yeah, or that Robert Smith would play here in Minneapolis well, for the Vikings. And he sat out a year, right? Yeah, exactly. Father's a welder. Mother works in a school cafeteria. Antonio Carter, second down and nine. Reception by Aaron Oster. Yeah, Shade caught one right as he left it. Yes, he let that ball go, too. Got hit right in the leg when, you were in, uh, when he released it. And that's when you really get hurt because you're really vulnerable when you're releasing the football. Shade has uh, missed his last six passes. Look at that leg. And you hurt that leg last week in Champaign, didn't you? It was on the last Hail Mary pass that he tried again in the game against Illinois. And you can see Shade. He said, I'm OK. I can get up. Well, let's go downstairs to Charlene Hawks. Kevin, Minnesota's Eric Dalen, the one to score the only Minnesota touchdown so far, is out with a separated shoulder. Also, Ricky Powers has been struggling with the flu, and he's been a hard time, has a hard time getting his breath. But uh, if he has anything to say about it, he will be playing. He wants playing time. All right, Charlene, thank you. Third down and 11 coming up for Minnesota. Eckers comes back in the game. This quarterback situation has been a revolving door all day, hasn't it, Gary? Well, when you, when you get uh, hurt, your court, second quarterback hurt, Shade has not had a great day statistically, but uh, I think Eckers done a nice job coming back. In this football. Nice catch spinning. The first down reception, Omar Douglas across the middle. John Agnews Charles makes the stop halftime. Notre Dame by a couple touchdowns over Florida State, Iowa State. Lincoln against Nebraska today, the fourth ranked team. Look at Auburn, rolling by Georgia. You wonder, you wonder the way things are rolling now, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, Miami leapfrogged uh, Nebraska in the polls. Yes. I would really, you know, was, will 
Notre Dame play a Miami in the Orange Bowl. I mean, that would be a tough game for them to play. It's intercepted by Ty Law. Fourth turnover today by Minnesota. And Law breaking tackles and approaches midfield. Now, coming into the game, we were wondering if Minnesota would have the minds focused and ready for Michigan in light of what happened last week. And obviously, it has been a game that has been very forgettable. Maybe that has toyed with them. Well, I, I don't. Th I don't think it's a question of whether they're focused or not. I just don't think athletically that they can stick with this Michigan football team when Michigan's playing good football. They're trying to throw the deep seam, and Michigan's defensive backs can just make up too much yardage when that ball's in the air. And those are easy interceptions for the Michigan secondary. You know now. Uh, Eckers came off limping that time. Shades limping. They might have to grab somebody from the from the stands to like finish off this game. Just a ten. New quarterback is in the game for Michigan. Jason Carr, the uh, son of uh, defensive coordinator Lloyd Carr, is in the game as the third quarterback. He has not played this season, so this is his first action of the year. It's got to be an interesting relationship. Oh, and your dad is not coaching <laughs> you. He's on the defensive side, but nonetheless is on the staff. Well, it's a great thrill for these guys to get into a football game like this. This is Dan Lloyd Carr talked about the phone the other day. He's been in Michigan a long time, hasn't he? I knew him when he was a high school coach in the Michigan area. And he's, he's put in his time and worked his way back up. Uh, and now the defensive coordinator. Second out of the four. Bianca Matuka running outside. They jump on him. No gain on the play. And a loss of about two, Jeff Rosga. Yeah, Jeff Rosk, I mean, it, there's no quitting that guy. He's going to finish off this game the way he started, playing at full speed. You know, whether it's Illinois in the snow or Michigan when you're behind by a lot of points, he plays the game the way you're supposed to play the game. You know, Kevin, giving back to Lloyd Carr, there's been a lot of criticism of the Michigan defense this year, and with all the injuries they've had, I think it's been a pretty credible performance. Only one team in the Big Ten this year has scored more than 17 points on this Michigan defense. That was Illinois, and that was on a fourth down Hail Mary type pass. So they've been doing all right. It's the Michigan offense that hasn't been putting the big points on the board. Carr with the pass, completion to Todd Richards. He's hit and fumbles the ball. Loose and recovered by Minnesota at the 36. Second turnover today by Michigan. Let's go to Mike Tariq going on college football studio. Mike. Kevin, let's uh, show you how Florida scored the points to give him 37. And Eric Rett, one yard run. He has over 100 on the day and passed Emmett Smith as the all time Gator ground gainer. Guys. Over 3,800 yards for Eric Red. He is some yeah. kind of bag. And his signature uh, celebration where he inverts his hands. We've seen that a lot. When you play for Florida, you get to score a lot of touchdowns. Back now, Red has about 3,900 plus as he goes by Evan Smith. 51 to 7 is the score. Michigan, Michigan with the lead. Michigan only had 10 guys in the field. And healthy perch kid running out late. Eckers dumps it off to Antonio Carter, who takes some hits and is at a game of about nine. Charlene? Kevin, the word from the Minnesota sideline, Tim Shade is out for the rest of the game with a twisted right knee. Same uh, problem that he had last week, Charlene, in Champaign? Uh, sort of. It was a twisted left knee, and he also twisted his left ankle. So he's having a lot of problems, and no doubt it's quite frustrating for him. Great. Thank you. Shade 2 of 11 today. And Minnesota will break huddle with a second down and one. Across the middle, Chuck Rios, first down Minnesota to the Michigan 47. Yeah, it got to be. We're going to throw a flag on that. Rick Thome is going to be the guy coming up late. Frustration play. You know, everybody's saying, let's just keep playing. Let's not give up. Let's finish out the game. And, you know, that's the type of emotion you need, but not the type of play you need. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, penalized in the dead ball spot. It'll be first down and 10. You know, Kevin, one of the uh, Michigan radio guys uh, is an ESPN guy. 
Larry Sorensen, the former major league pitcher. See Larry right there. He does sideline reporting for a local station. And a little bit of a trivia, he pitched the first shutout in Michigan in Metrodome history for oh, the really? Cleveland Indians here against the Minnesota Twins. Now he's out in the outfield shagging flies here. So. <laughs> Pitch for the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, Larry owes me $25 for featuring him. There you go, right there. Is that easy? Is that easy to get out? No, of no, he said he'd take me golfing <laughs> if I just showed him. <laughs> First and ten. Eckers in traffic. Getting in lobs a pass and it's incomplete. And we're down to 523 remaining in the fourth quarter. Michigan on top, 51 to 7. Sean Jackson on the sides of Eckers. to be impressed with Michigan's defense in this football game. They've been very active. They've got a good rush with just four people, and they've been on every throw hitting people. Second down and ten. No backs again for Minnesota. Little pump fake. And down the middle. Tight end leaping. Angular Mark Tangen. 6-4 freshman. Gain of 12 on the play. Get the ball down the field. Illinois State leading one Youngstown State. Eckers, by the way, was the quarterback with six touchdown passes in that 59-56 win over Purdue. That was his first college start ever with those six touchdown passes. 59-56. What a game. <laughs> Against uh, Purdue. Yeah. No yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost intercepted. Pass to the near side. Jean Angus Charles is there. Talking about the domination of the Michigan defense, all you have to do is look at the rushing yards for a football team. Last week, they held Purdue to only eight yards rushing. Today, Minnesota has not been able to get the rushing game going at all, and it's been complete to not domination. Michigan over 200 yards rushing, Minnesota minus 17. And a lot of that, the effects of having Tyrone Wheatley back. He has made a mark on this game. Second down and 10, another interception. Picked up by Neil Anderson. Getting a block and weaving by traffic. He may go and traffic now and down he goes. Inside the 34-yard line of Minnesota. It has not been a good day for the Minnesota quarterbacks. Michigan on top and rolling to another win. Outside cold, about 35 degrees. This facility has held a final four. And Super Bowl and all kinds of great activities. Home for the NFL Minnesota Vikings and Major League Baseball's Minnesota Twins. Long pass down the middle. Car. A completion inside the 10 to Amani Tumor. And he's at the five. We pass it off to Mike Tirico. Mike. In the SEC, Auburn's lead over Georgia is now 35-28. Meantime, Mississippi State at Alabama. Kevin Bowie up and over, and he lands on his head. It's a touchdown. He's okay. Bama quarterback by David Palmer. Alabama coming in 7-1-1. One, and one. David Palmer has more than 100 all-purpose yards in each of the Tides games this season. He's, he's a, he is some kind of player, isn't he? Oh, he really is. He played playing quarterback. Michigan won't get this playoff. They're going to have to take a timeout. Michigan dangerously close to another touchdown. Leading 51 to 7. First and goal. Bianca Matuka diving in after weaving by Minnesota defenders. Touchdown. Tamanga Bianca Matuka. Yeah, Bianca Matuka made a nice run on that play. But John Ritchie, the fullback, the freshman fullback, who is a very special football player and close friends, Bianca Matuka, makes a nice block. Going outside of Capella and then fitting himself on the safety. And that's the job that he was able to lead his buddy. Also, Gwen's number yeah. 75. He runs well. Goins runs well for a freshman of close to 300 pounds. Bianca Batuka with another touchdown. He has three now for the season. Two last week against Purdue. Take that back. He's got two today. Michigan has scored so much. You need a calculator up here to try to figure out what they've accomplished. It's 58-7 last year. They beat them 63-13. And the little brown jug will stay in Ann Arbor, making the trip home with the Wolverines. 
Coming up tonight, the early edition of the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard Show coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern. At CFA primetime is number 20 Louisville will take on number 10 Texas A&M. The Aggies have won 17 consecutive games at home. Comes out at 7.30 Eastern tonight, live from College Station, Texas, with Mike Gottfried and Ron Franklin. ESPN College Football Primetime. Here's Bianca Batuka. You know, after you say it a few times, it's oh, not like that hard. It is not that bad. Plus, Go ahead. I, you think a, you got it now? Well, I've been eating a lot of uh, All right. bratwurst, and that yeah. kind of loosens up your Do you think you have it good now? You got it down? Bianca Batuka. Spell it. B I A K A B U T K U A. Hamilton has got a 47 yard field goal to his credit today. Sends it down to Rodney Heath, who goes to an E about four yards deep in the end zone. Little touchback. One of the things that Minnesota needs on their. Uh, blocking the field goals. They need somebody that can jump. They ought to look at some of their cheerleaders when they're trying to look at this thing. Oh, that is a great <laughs> vertical leap. <laughs> I mean, that would really be a dead block. You got to admit, that is a great vertical leap. Can we get that in slow motion? <laughs> that was really fun to watch. <laughs> Wacker's recruiting the wrong people. Isn't you got it. You got to get these Just not spreading out, you know. Robert Jones, a freshman from Cincinnati. The players the are there on campus. He's just not playing the right ones. End around. And it goes to Tony Levine. And look at him fly for a first down in a game of about 16, 17 yards. A tough day for the seniors. Last home game for the University of Minnesota Golden Goal for seniors. They'll finish up next week. They cannot make a bowl game. Even if they had won today, they would not have the number of Division I wins to qualify for a bowl berth. That was Minnesota's longest play, by the way, of the game moments ago. Antonio Carter. Let's take one more look at that. Everybody yeah. calling your kids now. This is how you block a field goal or a way to get on national television. Throw me up to get on national tub. Did you see Dang. me, Mom? That was me going by the. Is that legal? <laughs> Some kind of hoist by that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to do the rest of the game, isn't it? <laughs> but the thing is, you're looking at it, Gary, because you've you've jumped that high before, haven't yeah, you? Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I saw you at Purdue. I saw you play. That was right. Robert Jones, second 13. Facing the end of the what people will do to get on national television. I know it. I know it. Tied in. Mike Tangan receives it. And we'll set it off to Mike Tarico. Mike. As you guys try to recover from the cheerleader, we're going to spend a moment by taking you out to South Bend for some reaction on what happened in the first half. Let's go out there and get a reaction from our... And rejoin Kevin, Gary, and Charlene. Kevin. Thank you, Mike. It's fun to see those guys in South Bend. I'm sure it's been a very enjoyable place to watch the first half of college football today with the Irish on top, 21-7. to Well, I'm really surprised by that score. I, I really thought that uh, Florida State had too much offense for Notre Dame. Their, their defensive line must be very, very tough. And as you can see, most of the people here have left to go home and watch the second half yeah, of that well, football game. I really, the only people that are here left must have TVs. They're watching the portables right here and just waiting for the traffic to clear. Quarterback remains the young kid car. And he will hand off to Ed Davis, who's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Holmes has had a pretty good day in terms of getting through that line. Yeah, and then plays. Kevin Holmes is from Detroit. Yes. I'm sure he's happy to make that tackle and get featured in a, a game against Michigan. Not going to be able to do too much talking though. When you lose uh, 58 to 7, nobody really talks about your one tack on the backfield. Mike Tirico comes up after the game with some scores. Update you on college football. Second down, 15. With the loss. Tight end Pierre Cooper in motion. And Davis. And he tries to find some running room on yeah, the right side. Like Could have been a fumble. Might have lost the ball. Those fumbles usually happen when you're tackled from behind, and that looked like to be the case there. Clock continues to roll down now to about 110 left in the game. 
I think uh, everyone agree both sides would like to see this game end. Let's keep the clock running. <laughs> Minnesota guys would like to have it over. Michigan would like to have it over. Michigan next week against Ohio State. And down to Iowa City travel the Gophers. All possibilities very high for Michigan. Car to pass. A little bit high incomplete stopping the clock at 43 seconds. On time for our Kelly Springfield players of the game from the University of Michigan. That man right there, Walter Smith, caught a touchdown pass, blocked a punt. He was all on special teams. He was a man. He really had the big play, I think, early in the game with that early block kick. And Omar Douglas with seven receptions, the all-time leading receiver in the history of this Minnesota Golden Gopher program. And over 120 yards today. And he's a player that may be playing on Sundays. Days to come. Punt now coming up for Michigan. Chris Stapleton will punt to Aaron Osterman. And again, 43 seconds left in the game. Osterman at his own 39. Out of block. By midfield and out of bounds at the Michigan 46 45 yard line and 32 seconds left. 39 yard punt. Ah, there's the jug packed away for the trip home, the flight home to Ann Arbor. You know, Michigan's had that jug so long that when they built the new Schembechler Hall, it was in their construction plans and where they were going to put the jug because they've had it since 1986 and it's not going anywhere this year. Last win for Minnesota was an 86 at Ann Arbor, 20 to 17. Scores coming up. Mike Tirico, then we go to NASCAR racing. Dumping it off, incomplete pass. Robert Jones, a freshman from Cincinnati, a little bit shy in his pass, looking for Tommy Watson, a running back, and another freshman from Denver. Down to 28 left in the game. 28 seconds. Michigan leads it 58 to 7. He's got plenty of time. The clock's not running on an incomplete pass. He can just take his time, snap off a couple more plays. That's a first down reception by the tight end, Sean Jackson. Nebraska's jumped out on Iowa State. It was a big game in the Big Ten, and Auburn looks like they're going to roll over Georgia and win. The same for Florida over South Carolina. This Virginia ball club's a good one. For an undermanned team like Minnesota had, you cannot make a lot of mistakes, and Minnesota's made them all today, and that's how you get blown out. Five turnovers, two block punts, a missed field goal, and ten penalties. Darren White made the reception right there. It's, it's not a good day. There's the jug. You don't think they still have water in that thing, do you? No, they, they don't have water. They, they, I don't know if they ever had water in that thing. That's what's rumored to be water, but I think it was a little more important than that. 12 seconds left. On the flat, Mike Long coming into the game. Black will continue to roll. That'll be the final play of the ball game, unless Minnesota calls timeout. That's oh, exactly what they'll do. Well, they're going to finish it off. One last play. You know, can't call. He's an optimist. Jim Wacker is. 58-7 Michigan with the brown jug securely in there. That time held the ball, and I think that a young Hoying probably learned something. Last the game not in question, and now Michigan's called a timeout. Well, you know, I, I can understand both sides. I mean, Minnesota wanted to run one more play with their young players in, and Michigan said, well, if you're going to run it, we might as well have the right people in. And you can see the people who have stayed for the game have TVs to watch the Florida State-Notre Dame game. That's about all that's left. Well, this would be the largest margin of victory in this series. For either team. Well, go ahead, Kev. Call me a 52-point play here. All right, here we go. No backs, four wide receivers, and three seconds left. And you're down by 51. Uh-oh. They get him. Game is over. Michigan's won it. The little brown jug goes back to Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
Once again, our final score, Michigan 58, Minnesota 7. Stay tuned for more scores coming up with Mike Tirico for Gary Danielson, Charlene Hawks, and our ESPN crew. I'm Kevin Harlan. So long from Minneapolis. Let's go now to Mike Tirico in our college football studio.